to the Crucible for a very significant moment in the championship because uh, it's the first semi-final of the Embassy World Championship of 1990. It's Jimmy White against Steve Davis over the best of 31 frames and they're about to be introduced to the audience here at the theatre and they'll be introduced by the MC, Alan Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, first the player making his fourth appearance in a world semi-final and what a talented and popular young man he is. He captured all our hearts as long as nine years ago with his dynamic attacking style and he's never let go. Always a pleasure to watch and a real value for money player. He's reached our semi-final with emphatic wins over Danny Fowler, John Virgo and Terry Griffiths. He's ranked the fourth best player in the world. It's my pleasure to welcome into the semi-final one of the game's natural talents from London, Jimmy White. And Jimmy's opponent, a model of consistency who has proved time and time again he's the best competitor in the business with nothing to prove in what has been an outstanding career. This great ambassador comes to Sheffield chasing a record seven wins in the championship. And to reach this semi-final, he's defeated Eddie Charlton, Steve James and Neil Folds. Ladies and gentlemen, the Crucible audience always give a special welcome to the six times and reigning world champion, Steve Davis. So away we go you, with the first semi-final of the best of 31 frames. Seven frames in this first session. Commentators John Virgo and Clive Everton. The first shot of the first semi-final. And uh, as Steve Davis is fond of pointing out, in terms of frames, the championship is only half over for whoever's going to win it. even looking at the black just playing safe so I think that's uh, a clear indication of the way that Steve Davis is going to play this semi-final he's going to keep it very tight Davis putting White in again after that foul.
Steve Davis. Yet again, Jimmy White helping out the referee, Alan Chamberlain. I just touched the green, he said. Well, that wasn't a very clever shot from Jimmy White. He's going to find himself in a lot of trouble with the safety, and if he keeps trying to pot his way out of trouble like that, he's going to find himself in a lot of trouble. That was a very reckless shot he played there. And lucky, really, not to leave anything easier than this. Well, he came a little too far for his intended red, left himself in one of those awkward positions where, again, he felt he had to try and pot himself out of trouble without knowing quite what he was trying to do positionally. If he hasn't left a red from that, he can count himself lucky. There does appear to be a red potable along the cushion, but Davis may not be able to get decent position from that. favour of the safety off the blue and uh, it's not in Davis's nature to uh, take on risky shots early in matches well that was a better shot from Jimmy White that really was a cracker and the way the balls are spread, well, you feel the first player to make a mistake. 
could lose the frame. off provides Jimmy White with uh, a potting opportunity still not straightforward to get smack on a color Well, Jimmy, I'm sure plays for one of those two reds that are close together in this corner pocket, but he just overscrewed the cue ball. It would help if the pink will go in the opposite corner as he's playing this red, but I don't think it will. So, work to be done with the cue ball. Well, not on the pink as he would have liked, but if he's going to stay on the red, he's got to just roll this in slowly. And a good job he did. Any harder than that pink wouldn't have gone in, I don't think. 24. Well, just a little bit short, 36 points in front. <coughs> There's still a couple of reds away from the cushion, which would be sufficient for Jimmy. Seven. 
Well, that's the last of the loose reds. A lot of work to be done. It'd be an amazing clearance if Steve could win it at this visit. Now that there's only one table in the arena, it's uh, further for the players to walk back to their seats. In trying to develop an awkward red, he missed a comparatively easy pink. Clever shot that from Jimmy. And Steve Davis, in actual fact, might have to try and play the red he snookered on, the one in the bulk area. But if he plays this one near the top cushion, he'll certainly be leaving Jimmy White a chance of a pot on that red near the yellow. And that's what he's doing. Happy to play for this one, knowing the other red's going to be safe. Still needs the last red. So Davis needs several snookers. Fourteen. Jimmy White, fourteen. And uh, however long a match is, it's always nice to have the first one tucked under your belt. Still several snookers required though. Well, 
Well, there's another one. It was careless for Jimmy to miss the first one. I don't expect him to miss this, just coming off the port cushion with a side. So often in a big match, it's been Davis who's made a massively authoritative start, but that hasn't happened today. Yes, and obviously Steve Davis has got to play on to try and get the snookers he needs and also give him a chance to get used to the pace of the table. But also, of course, it's a chance for Jimmy White to get used to the pace of the table. Davis concedes, White takes the opening frame and uh, there'll be a lot of sentimental support for Jimmy White here at the Crucible. He's never won this uh, great championship, he's now 27 years of age and I think most people in snooker would uh, feel that it was a little rough after the great career that he's had if he didn't win uh, the sports blue ribbon at least once. He's not had uh, a terribly good season. He's reached only one semi-final in the nine ranking events so far, but he's been very preoccupied with getting himself right for the championship. Even uh, at the last big tournament, the Irish Masters, he was really thinking more about, uh, about this than uh, that tournament. And uh, he told me last night that in practice, he can hardly miss a ball. He made two 147s in one day, and nearly another. This, of course, isn't practice, but the champagne's in there. If only you, he can, he can get the cork out of the bottle. Steve Davis to break. There shouldn't be any real problem for Steve Davis to get the cue ball back in the balk area. But of course, when you're playing a potter of Jimmy White's prowess, 
You, you're always frightened to leave the long pot. You never know when he's going to knock one in. There's no doubt that Jimmy White's safety game is uh, immeasurably better than it was two or three years ago. Not that much too thin, but no real damage done by virtue of the fact that the reds are pretty well clustered. However, White's poor safety shot gave Davis a comparatively simple chance to play a better one. Wasn't planning to hit that one. Yes, and looks to have been a little bit fortunate. Of course, it's a long match, and Luck has chance to even out. But at the moment, run the balls definitely with Jimmy White. Jimmy snookered on all the reds and I think that's a classic example of what we've just seen in the first few minutes of this frame. Jimmy made a few errors on his safety. Steve Davis never made one and that's what Jimmy's up against. He's got to compete in the safety. to come into that red uh, from a slightly different angle. Well, it looks as though that red next to the cue ball is potable, but Steve doesn't, isn't looking at it to uh, 
happily. And looks to me as though he's just playing the safety. Another point about long safety exchanges is that it does break a player's rhythm and White is very much a rhythm player. Was, uh, a pretty good one break from the number four seed. I think Jimmy would be a little bit disappointed with that. He had a free run off the reds and could have put Steve in a little bit more trouble than he has done. It's not just enough to get the cue ball near the ball cushion sometimes. And that yellow is inviting to hide the cue ball behind. Didn't want the contact on the second red. <laughs> They're not that easy, those shots firing across the nap of the table and having to play it slow to get position. So Jimmy, well, just riding his luck at the moment. He's the one making the odd mistakes on the safety, but as yet, hasn't been punished. Full-blooded attempt at that one. And uh, he's left an easier starter. Pink and black tied up for the moment. the best of shots wanted to be on the red right of picture Five. 
tried to splash the black into a potable position. Scoring is still in fragments. Just carefully looking at the the reds. It's a quite an easy safety shot. He's just concerned about knocking one towards the left corner pocket. And that's what he's done. Has the cue ball gone behind the yellow? I think Jimmy can get past the yellow. And he looks to have an angle on this red to stun across for the black in the same pocket. There we see it. <clears throat> Seem to move on the shot. Maybe that's the difference between practices and... Uh, a world semi-final. One. A big match, you're just that bit more anxious that the ball should go in. And so the unwanted movement creeps in. Well, he's left with the red into the right centre pocket, but uh, he's got to avoid kissing the red just below it if he's going to stay on the black. Well, he couldn't avoid that kiss. 21. So I had to trust to look a little bit with position. And, well, I'm certain he'll take the blue on, but it's missable. Twenty-six. 
32. Come very straight on this red. And that will mean he can't get the position he wants on the black. So we'll probably just screw back a few inches. And then in playing the black, just a little <coughs> soft screw up to the two reds in between the pink and black spot. So it should still leave him in prime position. Forty-five points in front, and uh, in a position to clinch this second frame. Yes, these reds just seem to be covering one another, so he's going to have to play a very precise positional shot. It could be that those two reds together, just left of the black, if he could just rest on those. We went into him a little bit firmer than I thought, but he's still got a red on. Davis not happy with uh, the contact between cue ball and object ball, but at least with uh, 50 a 57 point lead, his opponent already needs a couple of snookers. shot that. It was always going to be difficult to get good position on the next red, but didn't he play that blue well? Steve Davis, 58. So, one all will contest the first prize of £120,000 these next few days. John Parrott playing Stephen Hendry. They start their semi-final tonight. Best of 31 frames. And this afternoon, it's Steve Davis and Jimmy White. One all when we left it. And they are live pictures, still one all. And uh, Jimmy White missing that red. So it's still 12 to him, one to Steve. Uh, Jimmy winning the first frame. Steve Davis winning well in the second. And it's back to John and Clive to continue commentary. Chance here, maybe. Well, Steve, Steve Davis uh, has given away three lots of four away in the opening safety exchanges. But he's now got the first worthwhile opening. Six.
Push the red, red wide onto the far jaw. Unexpected mistake. Yes, and although Jimmy White won the first frame, he doesn't yet seem to have settled down to me. In fact, of the two players, Steve's looking a lot more relaxed. Looks very straight. So good queuing required. Well, the reds are there, but that cue ball being near the side cushion. This is a very difficult shot for Jimmy White. One. Good pot, no position, and green. Oh, he's coming off the side cushion to play the green. Couldn't really get safe off the black, I suppose. Cracker. Well, one or two little movements from Steve, and I think he's not too happy with the way the cushions are reacting on some of his safety shots. In fact, I noticed one that Jimmy White played earlier that seemed to gather pace off the cushion, which they shouldn't do. Of course, this is the first time the table's been played on since we went to the one-table situation. So maybe at the interval, the fitters may be called for. Meanwhile, Davis's failure to make contact on the safety has given White a decent chance.
6. Very well executed positional shot. Good chance for Jimmy to sew the frame up at this visit. They look awkward, but as he pops one red, it'll clear the pocket for the next one. Well within his capabilities, this. It's helpful to him that the black won't go back on its own spot. Jimmy White, 14. Well, it would have been if he'd potted that easy red. Twenty seven points in front, so red, black, and one more red to leave Jimmy White needing a snooker. This chance arising because White missed a very easy red.
43. Steve Davis, 51. To go 43 in front, with only 35 on the table. Foul. Steve Davis. I'm sure Jimmy White would have liked to have conceded then, but uh, it's etiquette in the game. Only concede when it's your shot. He does concede. Davis leads by two frames to one. And for those joining us at this time in the afternoon, coming up to quarter past four, there's the uh, two semi finals Steve Davis and Jimmy White, we know about. But John Parrott starting his semi final against Stephen Hendry uh, tonight. And John Parrott is in the studio here practicing on one of the tables. John Parrott, European Open champion for the second time. And, uh, well, he's had a tough time in the first two rounds. 10-9 against Mark Bennett, 13-11 against Dean Reynolds, but didn't half play well in the quarterfinal against Cliff Thorburn. 13-6 the score, so he's in his second semi-final. Got uh, to the final last year, of course. And in that match against Cliff Thorburn, he, um, well, he could have earned himself £12,000 if it stays like that, because that 140 break, which I know he's extremely proud of, I mean, getting a 140 anywhere is tremendous, but in the pressure of the Crucible, even better. And uh, he heads the highest break competition at the moment, ahead of Steve James, who was the highest break for some time with a 135. Still, John Parrott and Stephen Henry to come tonight. To come now, the last frame before their mid-session interval, Steve Davis to break 2-1 up. Nicely played shot. He'd run out of position Five. because of the bad contact before. But he's made up for it now. 30. And uh, a few loose reds to go at before he has to consider about going into the cluster. Could have been on something easier than this. This is a tough shot.
Didn't seem to pot that quite as he intended. Meant to pot it with a thicker contact. That would have held him above the blue. The choice of blue or the low-value colours. Just caught it a bit thin. It went in the side of the pocket. has made a couple of half centuries this afternoon but not all is well I think with his game One. he's made a few mistakes that you wouldn't expect It's always difficult 16. coming off a cushion to get enough pace in the cue ball to open up the reds. Oh, maybe Jimmy thinks he can get this one. It looks as though he can't hit it thick enough, but he could, of course, use a tracer's side on the cue ball to try and distort the angle. Looks like he's going for it. This could be a key shot in this frame. say distort the angle when the balls are close together if you put right hand side on the cue ball you enthusiast try it you'll notice that the object ball will go to the left and I think Jimmy there put side on to bend that object ball into the pocket and it set up a frame winning opportunity 24 Well, like you, John, I thought that uh, he played to leave the plant, but he must have decided there was no plant there because he played the safety. Yes, well, from where we were looking, it certainly looked a plant, and it wasn't a good safety, and Steve Davis is back in. 37 points behind, but... A good positional shot here, and we know how deadly he can be. Steve Davis, 10. Turn down the red to the middle. 
in favour of the one to the corner. These middle pockets from an acute angle aren't easy. So a good positional shot. And this should be end of frame. Eight. put Jimmy 52 points in front with only 51 left on the table. 16. So Jimmy White, having taken the first frame and lost the next two, is going to level at two all. Steve Davis, a level of two all at the intermission. And so there we are, after four frames, they go off for their 20 minute break at two all. Just about right, that score really. Three more frames to play in this first session when they come back, and we shall be in the frames. It, he's a player that, when you look at his talent, John, he really should have been world champion or should be world champion at some point, shouldn't he? Well, he should be. I mean, he's got as much natural ability as anyone in the world. But uh, his safety plays improved, like we've seen, and he's a bit more patient, and I think that gives him a chance of winning it. OK, John, thanks very much indeed. Three more frames to come in this session, and we've got just under a quarter of an hour left of this programme. Commentary team now, Eddie Charlton and Ted Lowe. David Icke and uh, John Virgo were talking about. <laughs> and if he continues to get shots like that, maybe he will win the world title. Certainly one of the most popular players on the professional circuit is Jimmy. Reddy's on to the corner, and if Jimmy takes it on, he's certainly going to spread the red balls because the cue ball's got to go right into them. Jimmy White, 30. 
could be a costly miss now, however. But typical of uh, Jimmy's game, Eddie, isn't it? Yes, it was a... The shot that Jimmy attempted was a shot that uh, needed a little more consideration, I feel. position that Steve intended but there it is near straight to the corner and a cut to the centre pocket so into the reds and no position champion came to the table there one would have thought he was going to get more than three shots in <coughs> of course there's a very different atmosphere down there Eddie you've experienced it Yes, when you come back to the table for the first time, having one removed and moving the other one over, it is quite different. The, it's a new table to get familiar with. The lighting comes into it as well. When the divider is in between the two tables, I think that reflects light from the shades onto the table, supplying more light than really than there is there uh, presently with the just the one table situation but it is nice indeed to settle down on one table and not have the uh, applause in particular uh, disturbing you from the other table everybody will be the same they'll need certain time to settle down to the new conditions Intended hitting the black uh, fuller to put it over the pocket. Still on, but it's uh, not an easy one. <laughs> Steve Davis, of course, Eight. makes everything look easy. Steve should be on the the other red to the corner next. That's had the black cut off. When he takes this red away. 16. Both corner pockets are open for the black, so it's a real opportunity to build a frame winning break now.
31. There's two reds waiting just over the right hand side there, as you see. 38. 39. Nice angle now to split either one of those two pairs of reds. You always need a little good fortune after a shot like this to be on the next red. And nicely done. Break goes to 53. 53. 54. And with that red, he's 50 points ahead. Yes, it's been an excellent break. The red by the black's going to cause problems, though. Oh, well, that's unlucky. That was bad luck. Excellent shot to get the cue ball onto red and black. Well, the way he's potting, he may even pot this one. Delightful break then by the world champion of 68, which puts him one frame in front at three frames to two. Well, they have two more frames to play in this session, but uh, we have no more time to bring them to you. But we're back at uh, nine o'clock and we'll have uh, news of this and uh, action from the other semi final, which is John Parrott, the number two in the world against Stephen Hendry, the number. Three. In fact, this is the first time in the history of the Embassy World Championship that the top four players in the world have all reached the semi-finals. So, John Parrott and Stephen Hendry to come. And this is what's been, as it were, the previous winners and... Welcome to the start of another crucible day, the 14th of this year's Embassy World Championship, the second day of the semi-finals, and the champion Steve Davis, along with Jimmy White, will be out there again very shortly, and we will, of course, 
be with them. And good morning, yes, live coverage of their second session in this uh, first uh, session of the Crucible Day. Seven more frames for them to play in this uh, session, and it's going pretty well, to say the least, for Mr. Davis at the moment, the champion. He leads 5-2, it was two all, but uh, three in a row for Steve Davis followed that. And uh, last night in the other semi-final, well, Stephen Hendry would have been uh, very happy with that, really, because he was 4-0 down at one stage and could have finished the session 6-2 down, but uh, he pulled back to 5-3 and as I say he'll be pretty happy with that considering what went before. Okay well in the few minutes we've got before the, pair, the players appear and Steve Davis and Jimmy White resume uh, let's just have a look at the sort of form that gave Steve Davis this 5-2 lead. It's frame six from yesterday's play 3-2 there to Davis and he's also ahead 12-8. Steve has an angle now on this red to be on the black next or he can return down the table for the blue. It's a good one. Keeps him in touch with the reds. Steve has an angle on the red to go forward for the blue or back for the black. It's a nice position now for taking the cue ball straight into the remaining cluster of red balls. Determination stamped all over his face. Thank you. 
For the 50. fourth time, his break reaches 50. 51. He's already had a 51, a 58, and a 68 in this match so far. <laughs> Lively step around the table. Seventy two century break looming up here. Seventy three going for it as well by using that shot to nudge the one red that was reasonably safe. He's nudged that ball out into play. Can make a nice angle now on either blue or pink to get to the final red. Sufficient, of course, the 81 break to increase his lead now four frames to two. And in the end, it was five frames to two, and Steve Davis uh, reeling those last three frames off in 27 and a half minutes, and Jimmy White in those three frames scored just 35 points. So there we are. We're going into the second session uh, this morning, and Jimmy White, well, if you think about uh, him being behind against Steve Davis, this 5-2 is nothing when you think in 1984 he was 12-4 down in the final and came back to lose by just two frames. Okay, we're uh, about ready. Alan Hughes, the uh, master of ceremonies, is about to introduce the players to the audience uh, here at the Crucible the this morning, and we can join him right now. What a talented and popular young man he is. He captured all our hearts nine years ago with his own dynamic attacking style and he's never let go. Always a pleasure to watch and a real value for money player. He's reached today's semi-final with emphatic wins over Danny Fowler, John Virgo and Terry Griffiths. He's ranked the fourth best player in the world. It's my pleasure to welcome one of the game's natural talents from London, Jimmy White. And Jimmy's opponent, a model of consistency who has shown us time and time again he's the best competitor in the business and with nothing to prove in what has been an outstanding career, this great ambassador comes to Sheffield chasing a record seven wins in the championship. To reach this semi-final, he's defeated Eddie Charlton, Steve James and Neil Folds. The Crucible audience always give a special welcome to the six times and defending world champion, Steve Davis. So the audience settles down, so do the lights, as we start with the first frame of the second session of this best of 31 semi-final, 16, the figure they're looking for to get them into the final. Alan Chamberlain, the referee there, <laughs> man from Leicester, and they're not sure who should break off. Is it you or is it me? <laughs> oh, Alan Chamberlain's the way to find out. <laughs> Excuse me, whose turn is it? 
I tell you what, I bet it's either Steve Davis or Jimmy White. It, it should be Steve Davis, say our BBC experts in my ear. Let's see if they're right. They are. Would they ever be wrong? Steve Davis to break. Here we are. Little problem sorted out. And the commentary uh, box is People Today by Eddie Charlton and Clive Everton. Jimmy White has been uh, on the practice table this morning. He's got to make an early impression on that three-frame overnight deficit. So Davis has an easier shot from the balk line than he would have had from near the corner pocket. Well, there's sufficient reds out already to make a sizable break. Steve will bring more reds out here when he takes the black. Gentle shot hasn't worked out too well. He has one to the centre pocket. Just undoing Davis there. So here's the early chance that uh, White was hoping for. It's Jimmy's turn to be awkwardly placed now over the red balls in playing his next shot. 60. But the position should be all right if he can just put the red in. 17. Working very close to the black ball, but it is on for the corner. <coughs> 24. However, off the thin contact, he was uh, taking the cue ball into the bunch and it just glanced off the corner of it not to a very promising position open the reds there and was hoping that the blue on the diagonal would be covering the right corner he was always going to be sending reds into that area what a marvelous opportunity for the first player to make a red there isn't a ball on the table safe
There was no alternative there but to try and move the red over the right corner, hopefully potted. It was one of those positions from which uh, it was impossible to get safe. Taking that red, freeze the pink. So with blue, pink and black, all on their spots and the way the reds are. Jimmy's only got to keep himself under control and don't make any silly mistakes. And he should pull this frame back now. He needs a colour and uh, one more red. This is certainly a different Jimmy White to the player that we were watching yesterday. He's right back in the groove this morning. Four was more than enough. One. But as it is the first frame of the morning, Steve Davis takes the opportunity to have a few shots. Steve Davis, one. Only one shot, as it turned out.
40. So Jimmy White's got the good start that he needed this morning. He reduces Steve Davis's lead to five frames to three. And uh, after the onslaught yesterday, in which Jimmy White had to sit in that chair for most of the last three frames, which he lost in only 26 minutes to go from two all to five two down, he'll uh, feel much happier now that. Uh, He's won that opening frame with a, a tidy break of 64. We've seen some great moments from Jimmy White here at the Crucible. He was almost the youngest ever champion here in 1982. He was two up with three to play on uh, Alex Higgins in a memorable semi-final, but that was the time that Higgins pulled out that uh, 69 clearance to win the penultimate frame on the black and save the match. And it was Higgins who went on to win the title. So. White won't ever be the youngest ever champion, but uh, he won't mind that if he can end up champion this year. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The ninth frame, Jimmy White. Or at any rate, at least once in his distinguished career. That attempted double from Jimmy finishing the red finishing in the position that it has makes that centre pocket a rather large pocket. If Steve decides to go for one of the two open reds, he could be wide of the pocket and still get the red in off the other red. So I think it's worth a try this one. Played it well. Davis, six. It's a good shot from Steve. Using that red to spread reds out of the pack and getting to the ball cushion for safety as well. The first player in now has quite, has quite a few points looking at him if he can get the first red. This is tough. Davis uh, has got to be very careful if he runs the cue ball away to Borg, unless he moves the red just past the middle pocket.
And he's made a good shot of that. The black's clear. Jimmy can make this opening long pot. He'll be nicely on the black. And there's certainly sufficient reds handy. He's missed his chance there though. Fortunately, he missed it by enough for the positional side of the shot to go wrong also. So Davis hasn't got an easy red. <laughs> White asking for the red to be cleaned was the one that he just attempted to pot and it did seem to <coughs> leap off the surface of the table on impact with the cue ball so maybe there was a fleck of chalk on it White was frightened of the double kiss and fell into the opposite trap, catching the red too thin.
But those uh, pots along the rail have got to be spot on, and uh, Davis was bridging over a ball, so that made it more difficult. White played to rest on the red right of picture to give himself choice of reds, but he slipped past it. Good recovery shot. He's back in control now. My word, and these, these balls are nicely placed. The wrong angle to go through for the black. Forty-two. And he hasn't uh, got into the cue ball quite well enough. Even if he was unlucky to finish right up against the blue. position then in attempting to leave the cue ball in the jaws of the pocket he put it in the pocket so again Davis can advance the cue ball to the balk line
Yes, another very good shot. Nicely on the red. Red fell out of the pocket runner. Twenty. Twenty-one. Jimmy certainly stroking them nicely. Now he's Seven. in. Top form here. Looking good. And already he knows he's done enough in this frame. So Jimmy White, having taken the first frame in the morning with a break of 64, takes the second with breaks of 42 and 56, and now trails only by one at 5-4. And what a different Jimmy White to the one that played the last three frames of yesterday's session. And what a different Steve Davis come to that. Couple of misses in that frame. Five, four now, and Jimmy right back in this semi-final. 16 is the, uh, the figure they're looking for, of course. Now, this afternoon, John Parrott and Stephen Hendry resume their semi-final. Five, three at the moment to John Parrott. And Stephen Hendry's on one of the practice tables in the studio now. And uh, as I was saying earlier, I think Stephen would be... Uh, Delighted, really. I know it may sound uh, rather peculiar to say he'd be delighted with a 5-3 deficit at the end of the first session, but when you uh, take into account he was 4-0 down and playing nothing like the, uh, the high quality he's capable of, then to finish that session just 5-3 down, having picked up a very important last frame of the session, uh, he would have been pretty pleased with that, really, with so many more frames still to come in that semi-final. So we'll leave Stephen, well, we'll leave him to this afternoon anyway, and we'll go on to the next frame. And Steve Davis, well, he'll be here saying to himself, come on, get a grip, this can't go on. 5-4 to him at the moment, he's to break. I was just thinking that matches at this uh, level do turn on very fine margins. Davis has only missed uh, a couple of shots this morning. And suddenly his 5-2 lead is reduced to 5-4. was going to be all right till it snicked the brown. Now this is the first chance that Steve has had for some time. One. 
has an angle on the brown to get back to the reds. Davis having the cue ball clean because if he plays the red to the left of the two open Davis having the cue ball clean because if he plays the red to the left of the two open ones, just a little run through, 14. he does need clean contact on that. If he gets a kick on a shot like that, he's out of position. Finished with the black straighter than he really wanted and it's taken the pace out of the cue ball having to play that shot and there isn't a red that he can take on. Steve Davis, it's good safety though. Didn't want to touch the black. He just snicked it fine enough to cut it to the cushion and he could make the black from there, but he wouldn't be on a red, so it's really not worth it. A good safety may have him in again.
so with the good long red, White gains the initiative. Well, it didn't appear that Davis could get past the yellow to strike the reds direct. But now that he has, the question is, can White see the red to the right corner? I think I can answer that, Clive, from my position. No, he can't. <laughs> he snookered on it. But he can't very well play a safety off any other red and leave it there. So I think when he's considered all the options open, that Jimmy will try and swerve past the green in the hope of potting the red near the right corner pocket or at least moving it. Unfortunately, he can't hit it direct. Yes, that's a good shot. He had to get a snooker on that red and he's managed to do it. Very sporting of Steve to congratulate Jimmy on such a fine shot. Well, this is one for the thinking cap. Well, that was a great try. Steve playing a cannon onto the red and just failed to contact onto the right area. It went so close. And although there are reds around the table, there's nothing easy for Jimmy. And unless the red to the left corner is cuttable, he's really on nothing. So Davis's good effort in at least moving the easiest red has paid off. He comes to the table, 29 points in front. Eight. 
方。Seventy. Was a well judged shot. Exactly the right speed for the red across to the centre pocket. Gentle run through would have Steve on the pink. Or he can go through further for the blue. Either way, the position is good. Has to take a long blue now, but he's nicely on the blue. Two in front. Twenty four. So this green and one more red would be enough to leave white needing a snooker. Twenty seven. Effectively frame ball. In this position. Davis won't want to develop any of the more awkward reds. And White won't uh, want to pot any red without being sure of being on a high value colour. So now White does need a snooker. Red didn't go in. I was a little bit surprised that uh, White actually played to pot it. All well, that's of uh, academic interest now, though.
Steve Davis, eight, and the throw. So Steve Davis, having lost the first two frames of the morning, has won the third, and now leads by six frames to four. Go live, Jimmy White to break six four down. Sixteen. Seventeen. Put a little bit too much backspin onto the cue ball, getting right back to the cushion. The pot is still on, of course, but it just makes positioning the cue ball that little bit more difficult. I don't think that's any good. <coughs> Through further would have had the red ball back to the centre pocket. As it is, Steve will be playing a safety. Steve Ayers, 22. Terrific shot and dangerous as it turned out because the cue ball went into other reds. Six. Unlucky kiss off the blue. Well, that was just superb. Sent out of position by the kiss off the green in potting the blue. He's now back in prime position. 14. By virtue of that marvellous pot to the corner. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. 
There may be a slight angle there for Jimmy to get the cue ball into the red. No, the angle was the opposite way. But he's nicely on the one open red. 29. Should go in the ideal position on the black. 30. And in fact, without taking the cue ball into the cluster of reds, there may even be a plant on. Now three of the reds are lined up, just waiting for Jimmy to pick them off one at a time. Jimmy expected the cue ball to be on the other side of the blue, but he didn't get the response from that screw shot. It's an amazing thing at snooker. Once you drop out of position, it's, it can go on for the next few shots before a player gets it all back again. Good pot with the rest, but uh, the cue ball striking the jaw of the middle pocket and uh, spoiling position. It was easy enough to pop the blue but uh, a bigger shot was required to regain position and he was very unlucky to go in off. So instead of going on to win that frame, that visit to the table, the loss of position proved crucial. White leads only by 23. The easy red appears to be covered. And this time, Davis hasn't got above the blue. Twelve. 
above the blue this time though and he can get towards the last red comfortably So now a frame winning contribution looming up. Oh, this has gone all astray. <laughs> Steve put far too much power into that shot, intended the yellow to its corner pocket, dropping in behind the green, but travelled too far, and that's a let off for Jimmy. Steve Davis, 24. <laughs> well, it's some sort of a let off for Jimmy. Now in attempting to hit this yellow, It's a free ball as well. Not easy for Steve to take advantage of the free ball situation. He may well send Jimmy in again because he's at least partly snookered on the yellow, if not fully snookered. Yes, and there's no colour that Davis could nominate as an extra yellow and get position on the real yellow. He lays another snooker. Oh, but a better result from White this time. Davis lays another potentially damaging tactical snooker. Certainly a difficult one to hit and every possibility of leaving a free ball again if he doesn't. Davis seemed to get a slight kick on that shot. I think the cue ball would have been even tighter in behind the blue. With a gentle swerve, the yellow was potable. is in the snooker. Always a chance of potting the green by taking this angle. Did well to hit it. And it's turned out very nicely for Steve. 
Yes, however good you are, you sometimes have to trust to luck. Awkward over the, or past the brown, makes this pot that little bit harder. But it's a good one. Seven. Blue and pink required. first four frames of the morning and now trails Steve Davis only by six frames to five. Oh, what a superb uh, start to this session then for Jimmy White. Some very entertaining snooker there as well. Three more frames to come in the session. They'll be back in around 25 minutes or 20 minutes rather. I'm sure you know the form by now here at the Crucible and uh, we'll be back live with them and we'll also have another little look before we go back at that tremendous red from Jimmy White typical Jimmy White shot inspirational uh, in that frame meantime we will talk about John Parrott and Stephen Hendry they started out last night and Steve the kind of touch that Jimmy's been in there this morning was that red in the last frame which I'm sure you remember so a little look at it now he has to hit perfect pace here to stay for the black and perfect is just the word will it go will it make it will it just yes it will tremendous shot jimmy going on with a 50 break and uh, eventually winning that frame so just to say six five down now and uh, the players have three more frames to play in this session and we can join them because they're, uh, they're due out back into the theatre right now. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Jimmy White and Steve Davis. So, Steve Davis trying to sort out this little Jimmy White comeback in the next three frames, and they're described for us by John Spencer and by Ted Lowe. Yes, David, this uh, unpredictable game of snooker is being played here this morning to the highest degree of potting by both these stars.
And that's a good shot there from Jimmy. Got the white tight against the back cushion, so it stops Steve bringing the white down this end of the table. Here's a chance. And that's the result of Jimmy's good safety shot. A mistake from Steve. He's one frame down at the moment. Brute force. Played to cannon into the red, but got the wrong contact. And I don't think you'll see him take this black on. Second thoughts. stop the very popular Jimmy White from potting them for too long. Yes, Teddy's obviously 
feeling very good today. That tremendous red he got there. Give him a chance of getting a few points on the board now. After this red door, there doesn't appear to be many of the other reds available, so I think we'll see Jimmy well. trying to disturb the pack. And this is going to be an excellent chance now for Jimmy. Just the one loose red now. But the others shouldn't be too hard to Four. develop. Making sure, though, that he had an angle on the pink to disturb the reds and just overrun a little. Presented in a flamboyant way. He's forty points the lead, that's what he's looking at. This was unusual for Jimmy. He made sure that when he, before he played that shot, he wouldn't be leaving anything had he missed it. So just need the red now into the centre to leave Steve needing snookers. say a century could be coming up here with the last two reds at his mercy and then Jimmy fails on a very easy one but he has a lead of 56 points there's only 43 points there so Steve uh, who's been away from the table most of the frame naturally wants to come back and pot a few balls 
Well, in actual fact, I think Steve will be going for the snookers this frame. Pot the black here and should have a relatively easy snooker behind the pink. safely out of that one, so uh, the world champion still requires four snookers. Of course, that's not helped Steve scores, putting the black against the cushion. But it's difficult to get a snooker when the balls are near the cushion like that. That's an absolute cracker. And of course, the main thing that Jimmy has got to be careful of is that he doesn't give a free ball. Missing the snooker would still leave Steve needing three more. But he certainly left another easy snooker for Steve here.
a well-judged swerve there, but I think he's going to be in trouble again after this shot. Well, luckily, the three balls have virtually lined up, so it's not going to be easy for Steve to get a, a good snooker behind the pink. Steve gets two of his snookers. 40 points in it now. Yes, and that was sheer carelessness there by Jimmy. The earlier break then of 66 by Jimmy White. Incidentally, his highest break in uh, this semi-final so far. 11. Has paid dividends in the end. performance Jimmy has won uh, four out of this morning's five frames and you'll see the scoreboard change now all square six each John John Spencer with me former world champion some terrific snooker here this morning John yes we've seen it all this morning and I must confess Jimmy has seemed far more contained this morning He's not still attacking the game as he always does but Showing a little more restraint, not not as reckless as it has been known to be, and played an excellent uh, session of snooker this morning. We have seen him uh, with a couple of careless shots, as you mentioned just now. Getting out of that snooker was fairly careless. Yes, of course. When you want four snookers, though, that's the time to be careless. It was the same when you missed the red over the corner pocket. If you're going to miss one, it's when your opponent needs snookers is the best time. Jimmy White. Alan Chamberlain then has uh, put all the balls together again. And off we go for the 13th frame. 31 frames in our semi finals. Without a doubt, Jimmy was overreaching there. Now we see what the world champion makes of this. 
Yes, I'm quite sure Jimmy wasn't going for the pot there. He was trying to play the red into the blank. And that's an excellent shot there from Steve. Using a lot of top on the white to hold the blank. That doesn't look as though he's hard enough. So well, that's a bad mistake from Steve. But I've got quite a few points on the board there. Jimmy can do uh, nothing but play safety here. Well, the second red uh, stopped the white from going in. That's a bad miss there from Jimmy. And it's just the time he needed to get a few points together and really get the pressure on Steve. That's obviously another bad mistake from Steve. Was playing to stun down for the blank. So now just a safety shot again. He's got a smile on his face, but making one, uh, one or two mistakes there. Certainly didn't intend kissing that blue on the way down the table. Yes, Ted, and of course it's the feeling Jimmy will be having at this moment. I mean, let Steve in twice and only 16 points behind.
As you can see, that uh, red on the left-hand side of the table will zoom into that left pocket if necessary, and the black is conveniently waiting there for it. Quite suddenly, one or two uncharacteristic shots from the world's number one. And that's a Jimmy ter Kiss. terrible shot from Jimmy there. Don't know what he was trying to do. Just had to get the white near to that bolt cushion as possible. Was giving Steve another chance. And this will be splitting the reds up. You saw uh, Steve looking at those balls just now, and it would appear there's a possible three-ball plant there. I think he's playing safe off this shot, but he didn't want to leave Jimmy the chance of that plant if it is on. And now we will never know.
So Steve slowly building a commanding lead here. So this red to put him 50 points ahead. 24. 25. Yes, and you would certainly be expecting Steve to clinch the frame at this visit. Just one more red and the black would leave Jimmy needed snookers. Steve Davis. Well, Jimmy concedes, and so the world champion uh, Steve Davis back one frame in front at uh, seven frames to six. See on my set here that so and so can you now that Steve Davis is back as well. Very important frame for him to win, Steve. He had a bad session, you'll recall, against Neil Folds. Lost it 6-2. And, um, well, Jimmy White's putting him under pressure in this one, as we've seen as the day has unfolded. So, next frame. Here we go. Steve to break.
Yes, an extremely good one from uh, Steve there. In that last frame, John, is extraordinary how Steve Davis missed some easy ones and then suddenly clears up with a 60-odd break. Is there a reason for that? Yes, well, obviously, early on in the frame, I think Steve was under a bit of pressure the way Jimmy had been playing, but <laughs> Jimmy didn't put any pressure on him at all in that particular frame. He didn't get the white anywhere near the ball cushion in his safety shots. Has it just been the same case here? Let Steve in with a rather loose safety shot. And Steve took full advantage last time. Well, he has an angle on the black to go into the pipe, but not the best of angles. In fact, he would have to really force that to split the pipe. So he's obviously looking to see if he can get that right and red, either in the center or the green pocket. You saw that uh, perfectly on your picture. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. And just nudged another red. There, that will now go into this right-hand corner pocket. May not have the angle on the black, of course, to. Well, as you can see, the angle is wrong, so if he wants to get on that red, he's going to have to screw back with a lot of right hand side on the white. And he obviously doesn't like it. Now for the uninitiated, all that right-hand side took the cue ball down the table, but not quite far enough uh, for Steve, but it's made no difference. And that was a super shot. Forty-three. Brings the break again to fifty.
Steve walked around the table there to look at the uh, red at the top of the pack, the one nearest the black. Obviously didn't fancy it, so he's made other arrangements. Yes, and couldn't have wished for a better split of the red than that. Fifty-six points in front. Three open reds and black available. One would certainly expect Steve to clinch this frame at this visit. frame is the final frame of this morning's session. There's still 17 frames to go in the match. Concentrating heavily there. If he can take blacks with these last reds 86. and clean up, he's got a break of 137. third century of the championship and of course now working out his way of trying to split that green and brown so it tends a very thin cut I would think here to try and go around the angles little Steve could do with that but immaculately he clears the table in the final frame a break of 112 to go two frames ahead at 8-6 so Jimmy White starting the session uh, three down he ends it two down improvement but um, some of the good work earlier on from Jimmy White being lost uh, since the interval in that session. 8-6 to Steve Davis, and they play their third, their third of four sessions uh, this evening. And of course, we'll have that in our later programs. John Parrott and Stephen Hendry resume this afternoon. And with me now, watching that uh, match, that second session of uh, Steve Davis and Jimmy White, is uh, Eddie Charlton. Your thoughts, Eddie, on what you've seen so far? Well, this morning's session, David, that I was uh, covering with Clive Everton, uh, it was Jimmy White at his best. He started off uh, extremely well. And uh, as can so often happen, the interval break has always got a, not always, but <clears throat> ever so often it has a tendency to, to change things, like the run of the balls. And you can be playing a match and everything is going so well before the interval, 
you're saying to yourself, I wish I didn't have to take this interval. On the other hand, if things have been going badly, you then say, well, thank goodness the interval is coming because I know things are going to change afterwards. And that's what we've seen again there. It was all Jimmy before the interval and it's been all Steve since. But two frames in it is nothing. It's really only the one. Every frame counts two. One you get, one the other fellow doesn't get. So I think the match is very much alive yet. And uh, if Jimmy can continue to play uh, near his top form, he's going to make Steve play hard. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, just have, well, maybe, maybe I'm being unfair, I mean, you'll tell me if I am, but just, just have uh, what we might call brain fade from time to time in terms of losing concentration. He got back to six all, didn't he? Mm. The frame after that, he gave Steve three chances before, before Steve won the frame, really. Yes, well, it's always been, uh, if there's a flaw in Jimmy's game at all, is the fact I've played uh, Jimmy a lot over the years and uh, I've practised with him quite a lot and Jimmy has lapses of concentration and of course Steve is very strong in that department uh, but that's all it is with Jimmy he just uh, seems to lose concentration then he picks it up again and takes off and mm. then he loses it again but I think it's the free and easy way that he he plays the game and um, we'll see the best of Jimmy if he can get a two or three frames in front instead of being two or three frames behind yeah, I, th I think you know, that there is very much that the, the way someone plays is, is, is the person. You can't have a different person on the table and a different person off it. And yeah. I suppose you, you have to expect that, that inspirational players are going to go off the boil every now and again during a match and then come back again. Yes. Well, Jimmy's an, a free and easy type fellow. He's a very, very popular player. And he's... Um, Everybody finds him friendly and things like that. And I think Jimmy plays snooker the same way. And mm. when involved in this match with Steve, they're, they're good mates. And they're in the same camp. You know, they're both managed by Barry Hearn. And, uh, it's very hard to put your head down against uh, your best friends and go as hard as you can sort of thing. Now, what about the other one? Because we're going to have a look at John Parrott in a second. What about the Parrott Hendry? Did you, did you see that last night? I mean, I think Stephen Hendry must have been uh, very pleased to have got away with 5 3 after being 4 0 down. I'm sure he was, because um, John Parrott was playing so well and getting a run of the balls. And um, in fact, Stephen did well to finish, you know, just a couple of frames down. But that match is far from over. But I think it'll be a, a good one. And I was. Uh, still in Lyon recently following our international tournament over there and European I, I stayed through to see the final and uh, that was a good final as well but John Parrott did get on top towards the end and if I remember he won something like the last five or six frames uh, to win that final but Stephen's a good player and um, he's very good from behind mm. Stephen Hendry um, which is the a sure sign, I think, of a really good player to come from behind. And uh, he'll come back. I think that's going to be a real good match. Mm. OK. How are you enjoying the championship this year, then, Eddie, overall? Same as always. I enjoy it every year. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Eddie, thanks very much indeed. Now, as The support for the man who's come so close but never become champion of the world, very obvious tonight here in the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield. and the appreciation and respect for the man who's done it six times, the greatest player in the history of the game. Good evening, welcome to the second night of the semi-finals in this year's Embassy Championship of the World. And in this first program here this evening, we concentrate on the match between Steve Davis and Jimmy White. In the other semi-final, John Parrott is playing Stephen Hendry. Parrott began well, winning the first four frames. But Hendry set a good second day. He's 9-6 up overnight. For Davis and White, it was six all after 12 frames. Then Davis took the last two of the morning session, including a break of 112. 16 frames are needed for a place in the final. And this is tonight. Alan Chamberlain, the referee, Clive Everton and John Virgil will commentate as Jimmy White breaks off.
break off shots worked out all right despite the unwanted kiss on the blue Too hard with the safety. This is a chance now for Jimmy White. The red that Jimmy would love to be on is the one that, at the moment, is practically occupying the black spot. If he could pot that and get position on the black. And that looks absolutely perfect. So this could really open up things for Jimmy. bit thinner on this black than we'd like so I presume now he'll take the opportunity to cannon in the cluster and should still be on the not the red in the middle Foul. oh well that's Jimmy diabolical White, 19, Steve Davis 7 so what looked like developing into a substantial if not a frame winning break is curtailed by a piece of bad luck Wanted to kiss into the black. Davis has recovered position though. It looks as if he could turn White's bit of bad luck into really bad luck by winning the frame from it.
28. Well, he's straight on the red into the far left corner pocket. I'm certain he played for that in the left middle. That's not a very good positional shot. So a good pot required and good position to keep this break going. There is a red to the right of the cluster, but it's going to be a very precise positional shot to get on that. So I would suggest that Steve cannons into this cluster now behind the pink. And it depends how this works out as to whether this is a frame winning visit. Forty-four. Not so good. Well, this easy red. I think he'll be looking to play position on the pink off this. One. Oh, he hit the wrong side of the pocket. That's why the cue balls travel so far down the table. And Well, it's not perfect position. He's got a 33-point lead, but he still needs a colour and another red in a colour. We'd have to put that down as a chance that Davis has missed to clinch this opening frame of the evening. He didn't get good position off the initial easy red. One. Yes, the only real problem looks to be the red that's near the right hand side of the table. This red nicely passes the black. So position off this red on the Seven. next colour to get on the last red is very important now. Eight. And how many times do we see that happen? Fifteen. Right in the middle. Choices now, left centre or bottom left corner pocket. But nothing easy. Fraction either way, this red would have been an easy pot.
23. Good recovery on the last red. Now blue would appear to be the only problem. 25. Yes, I think the blue is possible into the middle pocket, but it'd have to be in, well, in the perfect place to pot it and run through for the pink. I'm not certain whether he's got the right angle on the brown to drop in behind the blue now for the middle. He'll have to think of something else. Just five points behind. Steve Davis's lead to 8 7. And what a big frame that was for Jimmy White. What a difference that might eventually make the match by winning it rather than losing it. So 8 7. We'll join the next. It's just in progress. No score yet, and Jimmy White looking very keyed up. I don't know that Davis would be too pleased with that. He's left this straight, this red uh, straighter than he would wish. Refuse one or two pots you thought he may have gone for. When he's played safe, he's played thin contacts as to not open the cluster. And this is where Jimmy White, if he's going to win this match, has got to be patient. Of course, that was a safety shot that went wrong, but he's got to prepare for a, a battle to this evening. Nothing's going to be easy.
that's a lot better save to shot. Good length with the cue ball. But he's playing the best safety player in the world, so I'd be surprised if just one good safety shot creates a chance. red but a better chance might have uh, arisen had Davis hit the reds too thick That's turned out to be a very good shot. He's covered the, or the right hand side of the reds are covered by the black. I don't think Steve can get to the left hand side of the reds because of the blue. So this certainly doesn't look to be a safety shot back to the bulk area. certain but I think there could be a red on into the right centre pocket here brave shot that Seven. and I think he might just be able to get through to this red we'll soon know so by the look on his face well you didn't see the look on Jimmy's face but I did and that means he can't get past the other red
Well, the red to the right and the blue. Jimmy's just had a look at the right centre pocket. Yeah. No wonder he did. So after 12 minutes of predominantly tactical battling, this is uh, the first chance for a substantial score. That was a brilliant shot. Didn't have a, a lot of room to work with, but he's played it perfectly. Now, if he could get this black on the spot and good position off this colour, then, well, he'll never get a better chance to win a frame. 30. Oh, that nearly went badly wrong. As it happens, the red's still on. 45 points in front. So these two reds in the middle of the table with big colours will be enough to leave Steve Davis needing snookers. This to go 60 in front with only 59 left. table that ought to be enough for eight all clive was right it's eight all that leaves six more to play tonight you can see them in our later program that's the 11 25 and then of course they play to a finish for a place in the final and the last session is tomorrow afternoon but now then to shot of the championship where we've been showing you the nine shots selected by a panel of experts asking you to pick out the top three. It's the uh, biggest competition in television sport. The winner gets two tickets to all sessions of the final here on Saturday and Sunday. Magnificent response, thank you. 103,000 telephone calls, 25,000 cards and 199 only got it right. Well, early today, Steve Davis came in here in the middle of his match to draw the winning card out of the World Championship trophy. If you haven't heard the result, this is what should have been on your card if it was a winner. Here they are in reverse order, described by Hendry. So, shot eight, played by Dean Reynolds, judged number three. 
tremendous knowledge of the angles here from Dean Reynolds. Comes off five cushions before hitting the red. And finishes off by leaving it safe. Tremendous shot. Shot eight, the third choice. In second place, shot four, the Rocket Black by Steve James. Flat ball finish. Steve Davis plays what he thinks is a good safety shot. Steve James plays one of his specials to trail by only one frame. Shot four, judge second. And there's the winner. It's shot three, the plant by Cliff Thorburn. when yet to score in this frame has to plant the red onto the pink onto the third red which is a thin cut into the corner pocket <laughs> after finishing perfect in the black the frame is all his so you should have had on your card or down the phone shot three shot four shot eight that's the winning order for this year's shot of the championship. And thank you to Stephen Hendry for describing the shots with me. He was not one of the judges. They were judged by a panel of experts. And the card that Steve Davis pulled out of the World Championship trophy came from Mr. David Stokes from the West Midlands, who is bringing his wife here on Saturday and Sunday, the all-expenses-paid trip. His favourite player, he said, is Jimmy White. He's absolutely delighted with the news. He'd be delighted to know that Jimmy is hanging in there with Steve Davis tonight. So, Mr. and Mrs. David Stokes, we look forward to seeing you here on Saturday and Sunday for all sessions of the final Thank you for all the boat's marvellous response. We had one from Belgium. Unfortunately, it didn't win. We'll be back at 11.25 with this match and this score. He's won four out of five against Steve Davis to bring him to that score. Leading by one, ten frames to nine. Let's join the next they play. It's frame 20. John Spencer and Ted Lowe will commentate, and Steve Davis will break off. Very important to hear for Steve Forty. to get a sizable break together and get the pressure back onto Jimmy.
22. And these are not easy. Having to screw back for the blank. Steve Davis, 22. That's the way the balls run at times. It's come right back for Jimmy. One. And Jimmy had willing that white on. Left it short again, but can get into the pack, I think, with side. Six. Or has he seen a plant here? We'll see Jimmy probably go into the reds here, unless that top red will go. Obviously it will. Maybe one frame down, but looking perfectly relaxed. And Jimmy again, making sure he's got that angle to go into the pack of reds. Needs a little bit of luck here. Just held his hand out at Steve there, which meant it was a fluke. He didn't see the plant. This is when Jimmy said it's most dangerous. Once he gets his nose in front, it's a bit of confidence, nothing 46. is impossible. Just the red in colour to put this frame safe. Theatre in Sheffield, enjoying every shot that Jimmy makes. 
81. So Jimmy White makes his highest break of this particular semi-final and now leads by two frames. Yes, indeed. And the target for a place in the final is 16 frames. Tonight, White is powering on. He's won five out of the six played. Here's the next. It's frame 21. Davis is 7-0 up, but all night he's been looking vulnerable. Yes, that's what pressure does. And if Jimmy knocks this into the green pocket, I think we're going to see another sizable break. A long time, Ted, since you saw Jimmy take so much care of a sh over a shot. Yes, John, I was just thinking he's not flaunting the flamboyancy that we so used to see him. He's playing very sensible snooker. 30. So held the pink spot, so the pink goes on the black spot, and I think 20. it will pot. 26. Now you can see how straight that is, just a little follow through for that pink. 27. back in its own spot and available in both corner pockets now. I must say, Ted, I expected this when he started. I've never seven. seen him look so confident and relaxed. <clears throat> Taking no liberties. Now one 
good positional shot on one of these reds. And I would think that would be the end of this frame. Not got the good shot he wanted. break this evening of 50 and over and he's now as you see 54 points ahead more important he's two frames out And a little fortunate there, hit that much too thick. Wanted the white back down near the bolt cushion. And the world champion calmly weathering the storm. Now decision time for Steve, 50 points behind, does he take this red on? If he misses it and leaves it, virtually end of frame. And if he pots it, John? Then he's back in with a chance. All the colours virtually on the spots. So a big shot, this one. And I think we'll see Jimmy have a go at this red just above the blank. Jimmy trying to play the snooker on the red, the bulk end, but at the same time putting the green against the cushion. So good shot from Jimmy. Things not going at all right for Steve. Unfortunate to get the kiss there. looking for one red at the moment.
And Jimmy quite oh. rightly there, keeping the pressure on Steve. It's a tough one. No easy safety shot. And Jimmy just wants the one red. Has he been lucky? Certainly give Jim a, a cut of this one near the back cushion. This isn't too difficult. And there's everything in this game. Steve virtually forcing Jimmy to have a go at that one. And Jimmy's been very fortunate there to get away with it. And now what a big pot this is for Steve. that was under pressure, hampered by the red. Got on the blank, but the one thing he didn't want to do, of course, was put a red against the side cushion there. So again, been rather unfortunate.
has been in tight corners before. He knows how to fight his way out of it. This time, he's also fighting the bulls themselves. 36 points behind at the moment. 43 points on the table. got the angle to move the red here. It's a very thin cut. I think he was looking... I think he was looking a bit too much at the red. But it looks as though he snookered Jimmy on the last red there. However, he is now 35 points behind with only 35 on the table. One thing's for sure, whoever gets this red should get that black. Side chance. Overcut it, in fact. <laughs> yes, and that's certainly the end of the frame now. And Steve could be in real trouble now because Jimmy. We'll be going into the last frame knowing that the worst he can be is two frames in front. And that will give him all the confidence in the world. Steve has had a very bad day today. He's only won four frames. Jimmy here, the contender for the title, has taken 10. 17. Just the simple black to go. Jimmy White is three frames ahead. This is a trick shot. But it doesn't matter. Jimmy White. Leads Steve Davis, 12 frames to nine. What a remarkable evening already for Jimmy White. He's won, uh, what is it, six out of seven frames against Steve Davis. He's having the run of his life against his great opponent here at the Crucible. Here's the next, and look at Davis. He's thinking, he's wondering, he's in trouble. He wouldn't believe there are actually 11 reds on the table. What would you do, chum? Pray. And I 
don't think he could have possibly done any better than that. But again, he's going to be down the bulk end of the table. Terrific shot there from Jimmy White. Steve again snookered. on his cue ball, carried it away from the red. He's not too pleased with that one. And it's those shots that are building up the confidence in Jimmy White's play. Yes, and those are the shots that's keeping the pressure on Steve. Jimmy consistently getting the white within three or four inches of that bulk cushion with his safety shots. So Jimmy's just taking the pot and then keeping the pressure on with the safety shot I would think Jimmy White. And that's good play by Jim
And again, but this time, Steve has a path down the left-hand side of the table. He can get at that red just below the pink. But has to be careful he doesn't knock a red over this corner pocket. through to this green. Dear, dear. That looks like disaster. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Hard to believe what pressure can do, even with Steve. And I would be very surprised with the way Jimmy's been playing and will be feeling at this moment if Steve will be able to win after this visit of Jimmy's. to lead that will be Ted. Four frames going into the final session. Well it'll be a magnificent lead for Jimmy. He'll want only Seven. want three frames against a Steve seven. Of course, full of confidence. And Steve there knows that he's had a sad day. 21. So the pink to put him 51 in front with 51 on the table. And the red now to seal the fate. 27. Performance by Jimmy White. Forty one. Jimmy White. Steve has 
conceded. And like the sportsman he is, applauds Jimmy, who has now taken a four-frame lead at 13 frames to nine and requires just three to go into the final. Nine to play tomorrow afternoon. So Jimmy White, what a great night for him. Leading 13-9 and confirmation of the other score. Stephen Hendry leading John Parrott. Nine frames of six. Two sessions left in that one. So all to play for tomorrow. Just a quick reminder. Shot of the championship. I remember this earlier. That has been won. The right result was shot three, shot four, shot eight. The Thorburn Plant, the Steve James Black, the Dean Reynolds all around the table. And the first card out of the championship trophy, Mr. David Stokes of the black. Throughout this uh, season here, or this fortnight at the World Championship in Snooker Bay, we've been running what we've called the little trips down memory lane, and that's been available to us through the help of Roger Lee. Roger, thanks very much indeed coming Roger. to join us today, and uh, all those different sorts of old-time films we've been watching. Wonderful stuff. Um, before I ask you how you got hold of them, uh, people might say, oh, it was Roger Lee, uh, but of course you are one of the Brother Lees. That's that, right. What, is it, what do you call it, a variety duo? duo? Well, tri triple impressions, basically. We're basically comedy uh, triple that. And yeah. um, in fact, we're doing the Generation Game again. Oh, you're coming back to do that? Yes, we, most people remember us from the Generation Game. We did yeah. the first one 16 years ago, and yeah. uh, Bruce is bringing it back again, so if he's watching. Nice to see you, Bruce. <laughs> nice to see you soon. <laughs> Should be a good guy. Oh, let's put the archives. <laughs> <laughs> so one of yeah. the brother Lees. Now, yes. how have you got into this business of collecting uh, old snooker material, old films and billiard films? Well, I've always been a sort of billiards and snooker nut, and uh, I just uh, I went in the bookshop one day, bought a book by Joe Davis. Next day, I went and bought another one by Riso Levy. And suddenly, I was a collector, and start putting adverts out and. Uh, and then I had a letter from India. I went on a day trip to India mm. to collect. <laughs> so <laughs> no, no place is too far, you know. Well, I'll tell you what, you've got uh, one here I think you brought today, and this is uh, featuring Walter Lindrum, I think, isn't it? That's right, Walter yeah. Lindrum, yeah. That was in 1934, I think this was. Yes, this is the great Walter Lindrum, mm -hmm. the, obviously, well, the greatest English billiards player of all time. And uh, he was a le left handed player, but he was actually, uh, he was naturally a right handed player, but uh, his father taught him to play left-handed really? because he had a deformed hand, yeah. Really? And, uh, but he was, I uh, doubt, the greatest uh, player of English billiards of all time. He would give somebody like Joe Davis a 7,000 start <coughs> over a fortnight's play. Really? Absolutely unbelievable. Here he's just simply playing a basic in-off shot, uh, which most billiard players practice, putting the spot on the middle and playing the in-off. And uh, he was a master at all phases of the game. Oh, this is little teaching. Looks like a Jack Carnum teaching this. <laughs> yeah, Jack might even be on this film somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, here he's playing the drop cannon. This is the drop cannon, getting the, the three balls together at the top of the table. And from this position, uh, Walter Lindrum was absolutely deadly. He, he, could, he could make uh, thousands of breaks from this position alone. And, thousands. Uh, and yeah. uh, this is a little nursery, a little nursery gatherer. Again, you see he's collecting the three balls together. And he, he could literally play around the table. He, he, I think his, his record was two and a half times around the table. Really? playing these, this particular shot yeah. and uh, just kept going on and on and on and uh, <laughs> I tell you what I think having seen this uh, film before I think this succession goes on for about another 14 hours now and so we'll give you the score uh, in tomorrow's program but how much of this sort of material have you now got? Well I must have at least uh, three or four hours of really old archive mm -hmm. material and I collect all yours as well. Don't I? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I see you grow so a little bit old each year. It's lovely. <laughs> what about the bits and pieces of snooker apart from the films? Do you collect those? Oh, yes, yes. Mm. I mean, books, uh, prints, and uh, cues. Old cues. Uh, anything literally on the game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Roger's been terrific for Lenders Borough, them. I know it's given a lot of people an awful lot of pleasure. And we'll just have one more look at Walter Lindrum, because I think he's got a couple of trick pieces here to show us, doesn't he? Something about a favourite fancy cannon, I think. That's right, That's it. yes. This is a, he plays off uh, a bit like Willie just played actually, but he has to hit the cue ball, uh, hit the cue ball onto an object wall and then uh, gets the cannon. And uh, that, that's, a, that's a pretty good shot. <laughs> and here we have a, a screw positional pot, just a, a very deep screw. And in those days, they're the really old uh, crystallite mm. balls, not mm. the super crystallite of today. Right. Yeah. So that, that's a good yeah. cue par there. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Wonderful. I think Willie would have got his shot there, but I think you've got to kick, Willie. Absolutely. You've got to kick. <laughs> definitely got to kick. Yeah. Roger, thanks very much indeed. Good luck to the generation, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, any more impressions you want to do while we're here? Uh, 
No, no, no it's over. Okay. <laughs> okay, then very shortly now, we're going back to the snooker. We're going to the news uh, in a minute or two. And then after that, of course, it is live on the semi final. This is the setup of the day here with uh, John Parrott and Stephen Hendry at 11 all. That is to a finish tonight and to a finish this afternoon. There's nine frames in the match Steve Davis, nine, Jimmy White, 13. And that you're going to see live here this afternoon. Willie Thorne, do you think Davis can come back? Of course he can, isn't he? <laughs> I, I, a few years ago, was 13 8 different to Davis yeah. in the UK and lost. So, I mean, he can definitely come back. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy's playing the best I've ever seen him play at the World Championship. It's going to be right. a great game. It's going to be a great session, as I say. Back here, live after the news, with Steve Davis and Jimmy White. Hope you join us. Thanks to Willie today. Thanks to Roger. We're going off to the newsroom now to collect the international and national headlines. And the newsreader is Lynette Lithgow. Thank you very much. And back here in the Crucible Theatre on this very important day of the Embassy World Professional Championship, a session is about to start, which I think is one of the most eagerly awaited sessions in the game of snooker. Steve Davis versus Jimmy White, playing to a finish. They're ready with the MC, Alan Hughes. First, a man who captured our hearts many years ago with his own dynamic attacking style, and he's never lost that popularity. Always a pleasure to watch and a real value for money player. He's reached this semi final with emphatic wins over Danny Fowler, John Virgo, and Terry Griffiths. He's ranked the fourth best player in the world. It's my pleasure to welcome one of the game's natural talents from London, Jimmy White. <laughs> And Jimmy's opponent, a model of consistency, has shown us time and time again he's the best competitor in the business with nothing to prove. This great ambassador comes to Sheffield chasing a record seven wins in the championship. To reach our semi-final, he's defeated Eddie Charlton, Steve James and Neil Folds. The Crucible audience always find a special welcome for the six times and defending world champion, Steve Davis. Alan Chamberlain, the referee, as I say, eagerly awaited. Steve Davis, 9-13 down. A possible nine frames left in the match. He needs 16 for a place in the final. Jimmy White, having played last night, one of the great sessions of his career. So he's to break, and Eddie Charlton and Clive Everton will commentate. So Jimmy White breaks off within three frames of victory and a place in the final for the first time since 1984. It's a good opening safety shot from Steve, leaving the red ball in Bork, preventing Jimmy from taking the cue ball down into Bork. And we're quite likely to see a little trickling duel now. This opening will be more to the taste of Davis than of White. White is a player who thrives with a fast tempo and getting on with it, but he's got to be patient.
Davis making sure that White can't see the red in Borg. But White plays the shot cushion first and therefore the frame starts to open up a bit. Davis needing to win seven frames out of nine for victory. Good red, had to take a chance of position. That was a good shot. Red's nicely spread around. Colours available, so having made that good opening pot, the position is quite good for Steve here. Sorting the colours out till a few of those reds are gone are going to be the the difficult part, but it looks good for Steve. It's a good start. something had been left in a corner pocket which uh, the referee Alan Chamberlain has now extracted and given to one of the scorers Nice angle to take the cue ball into reds to spread them, but Steve will be giving consideration to the fact that at least both pink and black are open at the present time. And if, by going into the reds, you could cover one of those colours with a red. So I think he'll try and pick them off for the next few shots. Well, he decided to go into them and 70. played it gently enough not to do too much damage and he's certainly among the balls now.
Haiti. <laughs> Davis looks set for several red pinks. I don't think he'll want to take the black until the red, which is uh, nearly on the black spot, is disposed of. But would like to have been a little straighter on the pink. Black is his second choice of colour. Because the red next to the black spot and the black is now tied up. Yes, I think he's run out of position, Clive, but there isn't a, a red on. There were still several reds in the open, but Steve, Steve failed to get nicely on any of them. That's a reasonably good safety shot. Yes, Davis following the golden rule in uh, his position. Don't miss anything silly. Make your opponent beat you. Don't beat yourself. That's the first ball that Davis has missed that uh, he should perhaps have potted. <coughs> One. 
three. Nice straight pot on this red will allow Steve to take the cue ball back. Four. He had the choice of either pink or blue. Go 62 in front with only 59 on the table. Steve Davis, 23 and the frame. So, just the sort of start that Davis would have wanted. He reduces his deficit to three frames at 13.10. And how do you fancy his chances of continuing that comeback, Eddie? Well, it's got to be a, a super effort, but if there's anybody that can do it, Clive, I would certainly think that it's Steve. It's a big uh, fight that he has ahead. He's got to prevent Jimmy from getting in and getting settled down. At least till he can pull a few frames back and try and square the score. But if it can be done, I think Steve can do it. He's a great all-round player. I think a lot depends on how Jimmy takes his opportunities or whether he doesn't take them. If he plays anything like he did last night, I don't think anybody's going to beat him. But It's going to be a good match, this one. Yes, uh, Steve Davis's task has got to be not only to win a couple of frames, but to try and make Jimmy White feel anxious. And he would if his uh, lead was reduced to one. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, frame 24. Steve Davis to break. Or even wiped out altogether. Very good shot to hit the red, as can so often happen. Steve does have an opening now. He'll need 
Some luck here, though, to get onto a colour. the first trick shot of the day and the position is good as well yes it wasn't chance that uh, Davis screwed off the second red and got clear of the bunch good shot Steve couldn't have played the shot really much better than he has. There is one red in the centre of the reds between the pink and the black that is on for the corner. If he does decide to take it on, he's going to have to play the shot with power to bring the cue ball out and he'll certainly spread those reds. The present time he's considering the plant shot. And he played that very well indeed. Now he has a better angle on the red to the corner that I originally thought he was looking at. He'd have to cannon the cue ball into the black though to put it on. Red has the black covered. Now he's addressing the cue ball though. He'd be a power shot and back for the blue. Playing safe off the one red rather than open the bunch. Steve Davis, 29. Just doubled the red too far and he's left it on. And that was a good shot. Purposely played into the reds with lots of power. Spread the reds nicely. And a straight pot on the blue, but it's a ball that has to be pocketed because Jimmy's keeping the cue ball under control as well as he comes back up the table for a red ball.
7. The black bull always plays such an important part in brake building. And when it's tied up, it just makes that task that much harder to carry out. Thirty. This could be dangerous for Jimmy. I think he stopped the cue ball. He stunned it to a stop too quickly. It hasn't traveled the desired distance. And he could be cut off from the intended red to the corner. Seven. Well, that's a blow for Jimmy. He was in control there and there isn't another red available. Just for the sake of taking that cue ball through, perhaps only an eighth of an inch. Jimmy White, into a mistake by Davis's safety. One. No, I think that could be a let off a Jimby or a temporary one by Steve not getting onto a colour. He's done the next best thing important now that Jimmy can drop onto a red without leaving a red on. He'll try and get between the red and the end cushion probably. But it's a shot that has to be played with a lot of accuracy. Not accurate enough. force through the second red far enough to get good position on the pink and uh, another red has also been sent to an awkward position near the side cushion Steve Davis. <laughs> For golf, Augusta, for tennis, Wimbledon, for snooker, the Crucible.
Jimmy attempted to make the red. It's normally a shot to nothing, doubling it across and getting the cue ball back to the ball cushion, but this ball is potable. Missed it on the way down, clipped it on the way back. White also tried to open the other red from the black with the safety. But uh, he'll be happy enough with that. Davis is afraid of here if he swerves with any power that he may displace the other red from the black and leave the frame on for white And I don't think he's left it. I think the red has just moved out of potting range. That could be a good shot. Snooping on the red by the corner pocket. Steve is now presented with the task of keeping both reds safe. favour just the containing safety. <laughs> if he played the red in ball, there would have been uh, some shot to keep the other red safe. Forced into a mistake that time. Didn't catch the red full enough. He wanted to send it towards the pocket. Jimmy White, three. Chance for Steve now to lay a snooker, keeping the cue ball at the far end of bringing the red ball down the table. And you couldn't play it much better than that one.
Powell. Steve Davis, four. And a free vote. So Davis can nominate any colours, an extra red. One thing that he can't do is nominate the yellow and snooker behind the yellow. But he was quite entitled to nominate the yellow and snooker behind brown and blue. a difference to both players now that Steve pushed the yellow hard onto the pink and I don't think that it's on for any pocket now so that could prove a problem Excellent pot, just the cue ball travelling that little bit too far for ideal position on the black. It's still potable. And he could in fact take the cue ball off the black to separate yellow from pink, but risky type of shot at this stage of the frame. That was well thought out. Not only laying the snooker, but developing the yellow. On his way back to his seat, White looked anxiously to see whether he'd left a, a potting angle to the yellow. Appears that the yellow is on. At this angle, Steve can take the cue ball across the table to the green. shot that but now can white get from green to brown checking where he'd like the cue ball to be to bring the cue ball from blue to pink Seven. and if he can reach that without the rest although it's not an easy pot he's in very good position this is frame ball Davis seemed to have the frame under control, but White won it with green to pink, and again leads by four frames at 14-10. White just dashing out there, and if you've just come in and missed what happened here this morning, let me tell you the story of the other semi-final, which is in its third of its four sessions, and that was John Parrott.
playing Stephen Hendry. That's how they started out, with Hendry having the better of the play after a not too steady start, but then ended up overnight leading John Parrott nine frames to six. Then Parrott had a really tremendous morning of snooker here. He won five frames in a row this morning, totally in command, to lead by 11 frames to nine. Hendry could do nothing right at all. He looked a totally different player, and Parrott looked full of confidence. Then. Hendry managed to get his game together and took the last two of the session, so they are in fact at 11 frames all, and they play to a finish here tonight. The big story of the big breaks at the moment, well, nothing coming so far at the moment, and the match between Davis and White was pretty tight in scoring, but of course John Parrott, not only there in the semi-final at 11 all, but on the top of the century break, this with 140, if he stays there, he gets... £12,000, but he won't be thinking about that. He'll be away now, somewhere in a quiet corner, possibly watching this match between Davis and White, preparing himself for tonight. So they've shared the first two here this afternoon, resuming at 9.13, Davis taking the first, White coming back to win that last one you're watching at 14.10. It looked like Davis had the frame, but White is back there at 14 frames to 10, needing two more frames to get a place in the final. He's been in the final before, of course, but he's the man who's never won the championship of the world against Steve Davis, who's won it six times. We're going away for uh, a news bulletin a little while from now, but obviously we'll stay here. We're live here in the Crucible this afternoon. As I was saying, one of the most eagerly awaited sessions of snooker. So much resting on it. Old rivals, they've played four times before here in the world championship, once in a final, and Jimmy White has never been. So, Davis is back. A lot of pressure out there. Back to Clive Everton. Well, I've seen every day of every championship that's been held at the Crucible, and this championship's building up to the finest yet. Steve would have enjoyed a better angle on the black to get out for red. Made sure of the black. Thirty-two. But has only a long red to the far corner by the look of it. 
to keep the break going. Made it look easy, and with loose reds available, he can regain prime position. White goes back to his seat to give uh, his tip some attention while the, the referee cleans the cue ball. White uh, wasn't happy with the uh, cleanness of impact on the last shot. Cue ball too far and snooked himself on the two open reds. Jimmy White, 44. This one was beginning to look good there. However, he's played a good safety. So here's a chance to clinch the frame. tend to be that close to the pink but this red is on yes, that's a nice touch Six. a little further down the table would have made the angle on the blue that much better but he's been potting the long ball so I don't think Jimmy's too concerned at leaving the cue ball in the middle of the table. Eleven. Just about the hardest coloured ball on the snooker table to keep position onto is the blue. You oh, that's a bad miss. Lost his concentration on that. Indeed, uh, the positional side of uh, a couple of his shots in that break wasn't all that it might have been. So instead of uh, clinching the frame, White has given Davis a chance to come back at him. Second red moved the infringing red away from the pink. Three. 
30. Now this is the big ball for Steve. If he can make this one, he's sure to be onto the black and the way the rest of the coloured balls are and the last remaining red. The position will be good. 21. Thirty-two. <coughs> Thirty-four. Davis needs all remaining colours. Thirty-seven. But with all colours on their spots, he's a uh, heavy odds on to get them. And with that immaculate 59 clearance, Davis wins the frame on the black and reduces Jimmy White's lead to 14-11. Look what it meant to Davis. He sank there in his seat, the head dropped. Really is punch for punch in there this afternoon, as we expected. We'll be coming back to that match, of course, but now it's time for us to move away for a moment or two and pick up the national and regional news headlines. The newsreader first, Lynette Lithgow. Now on to, we continue this afternoon's coverage of the World Snooker. It's back to Sheffield and David Vine. Thank you very much, and we'll go right back to this exciting semi-final between Steve Davis and Jimmy White. Davis this afternoon having won two frames, White one. He's at 14-11 now, needs two more. He, White missed a red just at the start of this frame. He didn't miss that one, did he? Uh, Davis got him with a break of 20. He just let White back in. That's the shot he's played. So Davis on 20, White on one. 14-11, live here in the Crucible. White needing two more frames for a place in the final. We'll rejoin Clive Everton. Key shot coming up. If that uh, awkward cut had dropped, there's no reason why White shouldn't have been in for a frame-winning break. Now, there's no reason why Davis shouldn't be.
not. Thirty two. Forty. Forty-one. To go sixty in front with fifty-nine on the table. The black gives Davis further insurance. Davis has responded this afternoon like the great champion that he is. He's not got a great reputation as a comeback king. 56. Mainly because he's had very little practice at it. 57. He wins most of his matches from in front. There's been nothing wrong with his nerve, skill, and resolve today. was almost light relief. The frame was, of course, long since decided. But Davis has played quite superbly this afternoon to win three of the first four frames, and now trails only 14-12 at the intermission. So there's our situation as they go to their interval, I remember. The winner has to get 16, and more snooker to come here in that match this afternoon. We will be with it live, but uh, what a match, what a semi-final it has become, as expected, and what a session we've just been watching there. The story of the other match, which was played to a finish here this evening, John Parrott and Stephen Hendry. Tremendous morning by John Parrott. He won five in a row at one stage to go into the lead, and Stephen Hendry managed to put his game together, came back to take the last two of the session. So they are at 11 all, and they play to a finish tonight. And this is when you can see the snooker here today. It's on at the moment, as you can see, until 6.15, and then our first of our evening programs, 9.30 to 10.30, and then again, 11.30 to 12.55, the day that produces 
the two finalists in the 1990 Embassy Championship of the World. Well, the first time the final was actually played here was in 1977. And the two men who played in it were John Spencer, who beat Cliff Thorburn. Now, before that, they popped around all over the place quite a little bit. And, in fact, the first time the final was ever televised was in 1973. It was played then at the City Hall in Manchester. And the two players were Ray Reardon and Eddie Charlton, who's just been commentating. And, in fact, is sitting here in the studio. And he's going to watch a bit of memory lane with us, Eddie. Ray Reardon and Eddie Charlton. This is frame 60. Five, and uh, Eddie's behind and Ray Ridden is to break. No and surprise, so Ted Lowe is already commentating. Full of success at the moment, coming in to break off. Now requires only four frames for the world snooker title. Australian Eddie Charlton fighting a great battle, but a losing one at this particular moment. Balls have not been running just right for Charlton. Very intent, very dour. And Redden plays it safe. Unable to get in, Redden is keeping the game very tight. Now he's very nearly in off. No, the cue ball is staying right on the lip of the pocket. He gave four points away in the last frame. Charlton's turn this time, trying to put the cue ball behind the brown. And there's the man in line for the World Snooker Crown for the second time. It's not coming up to behind the green, but in fact it's not a snooker. I think he's unlucky here again. The cue ball has just come up with the side of the uh, green and the red, of course, over the top pocket. overcut the blue. Now all of a sudden Redden seems to have missed uh, a couple of balls there in this frame. This is how fortunes can change. If a couple of balls are missed and the other one gets in, his confidence goes up and just as likely to clear the table as, a, as his opponent. right underneath the top cushion. Seven. He's going up for it.
A great shot. 14. Well deserved eight points there to Charlton. Now Bill Timms is spotting that black and this might make life difficult. In fact, it has done for Charlton. <laughs> Charlton having a good look to see that the black is in fact truly spotted. That's extremely unlucky. You see how near the black is there to the cue ball. So Eddie just plays it safe. 14 to Eddie Charlton. And there we have it. Charlton 14, red and one with Redden leading 34 frames to 30, meaning that he requires four frames to become world champion. From where I'm sitting, I can't quite see where he's going to put this blue. I and mean, I don't think he's really made up his mind himself. He's just in betwixt and between. It's not an easy one for the bottom, and it's not a, an easy one to cut in the center. So he's going for the yellow by the look of it. Yes, he's going back to the yellow. Still undecisive. I think he's playing safe this time. Just clips the pack and takes Please the cue ball Charlton. down into bulk. <coughs> Red and also puts the cue ball into bulk. Atmosphere extreme, extremely tense in the hall, the City Hall at Manchester, where we've got about 1,200 people in at this moment. There is the great Joe Davis, now 72 years of age, the legend of snooker. <laughs> yes, Redmond didn't reach that. It's four points away. So Charlton again, I guess, will... Just clip the red and take the cue ball back down to the yellow. It's gone right back to the same position, another snooker.
and again Reardon tries to come up round the back there off the two cushions and this time it's hard enough just to touch them. Charlton's put a red into the D this time. That will stop some of the safety play down there. back to the same position. Charlton attempting a very similar shot, leaving the cue ball on the top cushion. Again, it's safe. Watching this terrific bout of safety play takes my mind back to 1948 when Fred Davis and Walter Donaldson were the world snooker finalists. And the sessions were running something like three and a half hours. Still very safe. putting the cue ball again behind the black. <laughs> Underneath the top cushion. <laughs> Charlton's in front, 21 points to Reardon's one, but he's trailing in the match, 34 <coughs> put frames to 30. is Ray Reardon, whose father was a miner, and when Ray left school, also went down the mines. Again, the cue ball coming back behind the black. We still have 11 reds in this frame on the table. A very courageous shot, but it's not there. Red tried to push the red into the middle. Very courageous indeed, but he's left the ball right over the pocket. 
and one wonders now what Charlton can do. One. And it's a nice one. <laughs> Taking the right hand red. Nine. And up for the blue into the middle. Long bridge there. Fourteen. Black again. <coughs> Charlton, of course, badly needs to win a couple of frames now, being four adrift, and he's very steadily building up a, a winning 22. margin in this frame. to 30. Thirty-one. Reduce the reds down now to six. Thirty-nine. Now we've got the five reds all at the wrong end of the table, really, there, down the bulk end of the table. Just enough strength to get 44. there. Keep himself on a red into the same pocket. <coughs> Break standing at 44. Brings the break to exactly the half century. <laughs> Twelve thousand miles away from home. Fifty one. 
She's looking at the last three reds now. Seven. <coughs> Back again on the blue. Sixty-two. Sixty-two, and there's still 43 points on the table. These last two reds, two blacks, and all the colours. Could he possibly make a snooker century here? Well, he's... Deserved applause there for Australian Eddie Charlton with a beautiful break of 62 to make him a lead at the moment of 83 points to one. Redden tried to push the red, last red over the middle pocket, but he's left himself a very acute double. And he's, he's knocked it in with his cue. In other words, he knows full well that he's too far behind to pick up that particular frame. So it's victory there to Eddie Charlton, 83 points to Ray Redden, seven, and Redden leading 34 frames to 31. And 17 years later, here's Eddie <laughs> sitting with me watching it. That's the first time you've seen that, Eddie, isn't it? It is, yes. I remember that um, I played Alex Higgins in the semi-final, mm. and I think that was the first time that uh, the television cameras uh, were in. Yeah. We were doing pot black at the time. I came over in 72 and was lucky enough to win pot black and retain the title again in 73, so. Well, we picked that frame out especially because that's one you won, but of course. Yeah, you, thank you. <laughs> but you, you lost the match. You're looking younger yes. every minute. I must yeah. say, that was 73, it's now 1990. <laughs> Seems like last weekend, David. That's the, that's the point, I mean. Has the game changed much, do you think, since then? Yes, I think it has. Um, I think the... Um, the thing that I see is that the, there are more uh, good players now. There are more younger players uh, coming through. And um, I think it's more of a potting game uh, mm. now. Um, people, players, play harder shots. They hit yeah. the ball harder. That's right. I For instance, that. when I was a young player coming up through the uh, professionals of the day, and by gee, there were some good ones around, yeah. um, you never saw a player hit a ball hard. You kept the cue ball close to the object balls. You weren't content to pot from a distance. Uh, it was considered a bad position shot if you had to pot a ball the length of the table. Yeah, and, yeah it has changed a bit. Uh, just keep my eye on the crucible here because we're going back, of course, live when Steve Davis and Jimmy White have finished their interval. They're coming up very shortly. Yeah. Tremendous session, wasn't it? It was. Mm. And um, Steve's uh, fighting back as I expected him to. Mind you, Jimmy missing the yellow... Um, in the uh, frame that mm. he did. Uh, mm. he, he was in a very strong position right. there. But Steve has got it all to do, and if Jimmy can play anything like he has yeah. been playing, yeah. he, he should get there. But yeah. 
If anybody can climb out of this, Steve Davis can. Uh, winning three this afternoon, and uh, my goodness, you saw it was on his face when he sank in his chair at the end of one, I can tell you. Yes. Anyway, here they come. Here's the Crucible Ladies this and afternoon here. And uh, Hansi Allen Hughes and just Steve introducing Davis. them to another packed house again. Jimmy White and Steve Davis. 14 to Jimmy White, 12 to Steve Davis. Playing now in this session to a finish. Jimmy White needs two for a place in the final. The second time he'd been in the final, the on occasion he lost to Davis. Frame 27, Alan Chamberlain, the referee, Jimmy White to break, and your commentators to a finish, John Spencer and Ted Lowe. Still anybody's guess as to which one of these two great entertainers is going to be in our final. unfortunate to go in off but no real damage done just makes the safety shot a lot easier for Steve As you saw, Steve hit the wrong side of that red, and he's now allowed a chance for Jimmy. Colour's not too clever. One. And that's certainly not the best of shots for Jim, from Jimmy there. Tend to go down towards the bulk end of the table for the blue in the centre.
danger, of course, for both players if they catch this red too thick, they'll be knocking a red over this right hand corner. You're right, John, and it's for Jimmy. Flick on the brown, very helpful there to Jimmy. Wouldn't have had the angle on the yellow that he's got. So now a good chance to get down to the black end of the table. Excellent position here to try and get onto the black into the same corner pocket. Four. <coughs> Jimmy's problem here, of course, is the top red of those three I feel will be covered when the black is re-spotted Decision time. This is the different Jimmy White. Normally he would have slammed that green into the green pocket. Under these conditions. He's playing a very different game of snooker. And it's paying off. Retaining a very cool composure is Jimmy White. Could have done it wrong there, and he knows it. Yes, he may have been rather fortunate if he's covered this red up over the corner pocket.
And that previous shot was a, a bad shot from Jimmy. Didn't have to play that. Yes, and this time, Ted, Steve's turned to be rather fortunate. I noticed Jimmy shot out of his chair like a bolt from a gun, but there was nothing there when he got to the table. He's looking to see if they're touching. Alan Chamberlain will tell us. And I think the referee has declared touching ball. <laughs> well, obviously, he hadn't declared a touching ball. Otherwise, that would have been a foul. It looks like Steve is going to take this red on. If he does, it's going to be a big shot. <coughs> now, has he left a possible plant for Jimmy into this corner? possible but that's given Jimmy an excellent chance here Six. not quite far enough on the blue but pinks available And again, short on the blue, but as a straight green, if that red to the left of the pink will go. And can he get through to that red? It appears he can, looking at Seven. his face. Jimmy there looking at the blank because now he's opened up the path of the bottom red into this right hand corner pocket. Twenty-five. 
26. doesn't look to have the angle on the black and I feel he has to probably take the pink here. So the break goes to 33 and he's 40 points ahead. Yes, and what a good shot he played there. Could have worked out better, but you can cut this red in, could be end of frame. <coughs> so just a colour and a red 34. to leave Steve needing snookers. Far enough for that red, and it couldn't be better. So this should certainly be the end of this frame. Six points in it, Steve wanting one snooker. One. Don't know whether Jimmy played the right shot there. I'm going to go at the pink and play in the position on the reds. He's certainly given Steve the chance of the two blanks. Well, I had Jimmy just roll the pink in and sent the white down the table. Steve Davis is as immaculate as ever, striving here to retain that title. For the past seven years, he's reached the final of the World Snooker Championship. Eight. So, down to the colours. <laughs> Just one snooker required. Well, 
Well, it was certainly a good effort, but I think Jimmy can just about see enough of this to actually pot the yellow. Normally these wouldn't be too difficult to hit, but with this pressure on, you never know. These, of course, are the moments of tension. You can't see them, but I can assure you there's a lot of butterflies around down there. And Steve will be very disappointed with that shot. Good chance of getting a snooker there. Great try. Brilliant. And this time, this is a difficult one. Judged to perfection there by Steve. Would like to have gone round the angles, but I think the only way is off this right hand cushion direct. Great shot under pressure. The Pack Crucible Theatre here, thrilled with that excitement. check side that time to hold the cue ball behind the black. Yes, and if that's tied up against the black, which it looks like from here, this is even more difficult. Had the green been a couple of inches away from the cushion, it would have been much easier. great try but it's the snooker that Steve Davis wanted the difference now 24 and there are 25 points there he 
wants this frame to be just one frame behind. Steve, cut that back. Well, it certainly looks like it, and Jimmy Saviour here might be the pink. That's going to be the difficult ball, I would feel. So electing to leave a straight pink, deep screw back for the black. Ooh. Well, Jimmy, I'm sure is sick over that one. Seems to upset Steve a little too. Yes, of course, Steve now stuck with the problem of safety shot or should he have a go? The importance of this frame is already uh, shown by the length of time. It's the longest frame the match has yet seen. Second time then in the semi-final, Steve Davis gets out of jail. He's pinched the frame from Jimmy, and there's just one frame between them now at 13 frames to 14. Oh my goodness, look at this, and look what's been happening in the other semi-final here today, where John Parrott opened up overnight at 6-9 down against Stephen Hendry and started out the third of the four sessions this morning. He was in sparkling form. Parrott won five frames on the trot to go ahead 11-9. Then suddenly Hendry, who had been a totally different player this morning from uh, last night, got his act together a little bit and he took the last two of that session and how important they might prove to be to be at 11 frames all. And that's how they'll start again here tonight playing to a finish. And we're staying, of course, with the Steve Davis-Jimmy White match, but what about that frame 27 you've just been watching there? What an incredible finish it was to that. Let's have a look at that pink that Steve Davis had to play in a really crucial situation in the match. Just pink and black left. He needs them both. Played for that, along the rail, drops in. Oh, and Jimmy White, what can you say for that? Quite incredible. Then, of course, played a wonderful black, almost the sort of black that he had to play or tried to play against Dennis Taylor in the epic final. But so it's 13-14. Jimmy White sitting there. I'm sure he won't be thinking about it, but the facts of Jimmy White's record are that in 1982, when he was in the semi-final, this is the fifth time he's been in the semi-final. In 82, he was 15-13 up against Alex Higgins, lost the next frame. He was then 59 nil up at 15-14. He was 59 nil up and still lost the match. But uh, he's not going to think about that. Davis is back. It's 13-14, 16 the target. Ted Lowe. 
Yes, thank you, David. And still anybody's guess as to who's going to be in the final. Jimmy here wanting two frames. Steve wants three frames. Just four frames left in the match now. Way off that one. So big pop from Steve here now. Black could be available. Perfect position for getting a sizable break. Move the red off the black spot. And what a tremendous match this is proving to be. He was four frames down when he came to start this session. Thirty-two.
One third of the reds have now disappeared. Forty. And he's taken a black with each one. Yes, I'm sure that won't be in Steve's mind. Back down for the blue off this one. Steve Davis, 40. Of course, those are the sort of misses that would inspire Jimmy. Probably, probably thought he lost the frame at that visit. So will it do this confident a world of good, particularly after that last frame? Overdone that one. Is yeah. he going to be saved by this pink? Well, if the pink will go, he's rather fortunate. You can see there how narrow the margin is. If he played it slow, the nab of the cloth would take it into the pocket. So Jimmy was rather fortunate there. He'd been able to hold the spot, so the pink goes down on the green. Yes, unlucky that. 27. Steve can see a way back to the table 20, now. 26. In actual fact, Ted, I didn't really think Jimmy was unlucky there. It was the previous shot he played on the red when he went down for the pink. I thought he should have stayed for the blue. Just look there, but I think he's got that red covered. There, our camera picks it up for you, Steve. Unable to get at that loose one. Well, he has left Jimmy a red into the centre. Screw back for the black, but these are certainly not easy from this angle. <laughs> That's a tremendous pot. They're easy to Jimmy White, John.
a point in front. Twenty-two. Really, just the right, the red near the right hand cushion, the difficult one. in front so I think we'll probably see him screwing back for the blue or one of the bolt colors here didn't get hold of that at all but he's played that well so once again, 22 points in front. Red and a blue would be sufficient to leave Steve Need in snookers once again. Steve still struggling there. And I don't think we're going to see any mistakes this time from Jimmy White. Three points the difference then. Twenty two points on the table. Steve wants three snookers. Typical Jimmy White Brown settles the issue. He's just one frame away from his goal. So both players leave the arena for a second, but Jimmy White battles on, now leading 15 frames to 13 and requires just one frame to put himself into the 1990 World Snooker Final. Yes, it is dramatic, Ted, isn't it? And uh, Ray Evans is sitting here with me. He hasn't been able to finish his cup of tea yet. It's some session, Ray, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic, David. Uh, I've watched most of it. I, have, I must admit, mm. I've watched a little bit of the racing in between, but I've watched <laughs> most of it. Um, but, I mean, tremendous snooker. And to, for Jimmy to come back and win that frame, having suffered heartache, he must have done after throwing the last one. I mean, that was a wonderful yeah. frame for Jimmy White. Yeah. And a very big frame as well, 14 all or 13 15. That's, that's a big gap, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he, he, with the best will in the world, I know the people all around the room here were thinking, Davis is going to do it again. Now yeah. he's done that. Jimmy's going to be knocked out. And I mean, it's uh, tremendous. I, 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 you, know, you, you start to lose words about it, don't you? Two or three times when Jimmy's had chances and sort of played the odd funny ball, hasn't he? Which he does. Well, you're going to have to have that with Jimmy White, aren't you? I mean, that's part of the charm. That's why everyone loves watching Jimmy White. And uh, I mean, even then, having lost the last frame by, with snookers, mm. he's got a very easy brown on right. and suddenly has a go at the brown and Davis wants two snookers and suddenly, you know, but Jimmy's going to play that way. He can't do it any other way. Yeah. There's no doubt about what Davis is going through out there. A couple of times we've seen his head, in fact, earlier this afternoon when he won a frame, his head just sank into his knees and he sat there like a, a statue for about five minutes. Yeah, but you have to admire that it would be so easy for him to say, 
turn in, you know, throw in the towel because mm. I'm being outplayed by Jimmy. But he, he isn't. He's a great champion, and he's he's going to make it mm. all the way. Mm. Well, there's never way he's going to throw in the towel. Anyway, they're back into the arena. There it is, Jimmy White, 15-13, needing just one. And as I say, this is the fifth time that he's played Steve Davis here in the Crucible. Once, of course, they played in the final, and Davis won it. And now he's here again. So we're here, we're staying here, it's live, it's Jimmy White to break. Ted. Yes, Steve Davis coming to the table. A great champion, a worthy champion. And now fighting to save this semi final. Yes, and what a crunch shot he's made this black now. A little thinner than he would have liked, but has to go into the pack. Jimmy not quite getting the pace on his safety shots. He's a little nearer that bolt cushion.
Alan Chamberlain has given a touching ball here. Jimmy's certainly finding that ball cushion now. Keeping the pressure on Steve. some practice in at that shot. Of course, each time you play this shot, it gets a little more dangerous. The reds start to just open up a little bit. Jimmy keeps on like this, Steve will move his chair to that spot. I think the problem for Steve here is the yellow. Directly in line with the angle he would like to go into the pack of reds. Now I'm sure there's an opening here. Yes, and if this red will go into the right-hand corner pocket, not that one, the other one, will be on the black. Jimmy shown a lot of patience in this frame, waited for the opening. We'll have to screw back here and hold for the black off the other red. A lot of oohs and ahs running around our audience. Yes, there's certainly some pressure out there. Six. 
Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. And now may be a bit of a problem for Steve. The red at the back of the black. Perhaps stopping him going into the pack. He's unlucky. Fourteen points ahead. Touching both balls. Touching both balls, says Alan Chamberlain. So neither of those two reds must move. Steve will be trying to make sure that Jimmy can't hit that red near the left hand side cushion. Steve Davis, 22. That's a good shot from Jimmy, particularly if he can't get at that red near the bolt line. See Jimmy have a double at this one, taking the white back to the vault. And is it that's all wrong? And lucky not to have left it. <laughs> Jimmy White, probably the uh, most popular young uh, snooker star the game has seen. And that red over the centre is going to force Steve into having a go at this red. So this is a big shot now. With the position of the balls at present, 
The next mistake could be the costly one. That is terribly unlucky for Jimmy. Yes, Ted, what else is going to happen in this match? <laughs> and that's the problem, of course. Not only was he snookered, but even though he's hit the snooker, he's left Steve in. A lead of 20 points. <sighs> this red will go, I think, into the corner, but would have liked a much easier shot than this. He's got the green. That red down there is on. Ten. Yes, but Steve would certainly be looking for an easier red than this. These are missable when you're so near the cushion. Steve Davis, ten. And I think Jimmy may be hampered now with the green. But one good positional shot here. One. And certainly the pressure getting at both players. A young man there who has never lost the common touch, but finding that frame that he wants difficult to get. Yes, and that certainly wasn't the pocket Steve was playing for the blue into. Steve Davis, one. Now, will this red go? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, please. Those are the sort of things that give Jimmy the confidence. And he's taking it on.
Taking this down the table. Jimmy White. Had it a gun? I think he might have won the frame. As it is, he could so easily lose it. Yes, I don't think there's much danger now. Just the red and the black to leave Jimmy needing snookers. The one Steve wanted. Thirty nine points ahead, only twenty seven points left. Steve Davis. Jimmy concedes. So the defending world champion Steve Davis saves this semi-final and there's just one frame only in it now. Steve wanting two frames and Jimmy still wanting that one. What a performance this is, John. A terrific semi-final. Yes. I don't think you think you've seen everything in this semi-final. Jimmy, very unfortunate. Jimmy very unfortunate when he got snookered, of course, after potting the red, but Steve took full advantage of it. We'll be back as they come back. No wonder they're popping out every five minutes. My goodness, the tension and the nerves out there. Of course, whoever does win it plays either John Parrott or Stephen Hendry. And the story of that match was this morning, of course, John Parrott started at 6-9 down. But he had a tremendous session here this morning. He played like a totally different man, and Hendry was a different man because Hendry could do nothing right. And John Parrott won five on the trot. To lead 11-9 and then Hendry finally got his game back together a bit and I think he was absolutely delighted to take the next two to go in at 11 all and that's how in fact they'll come out tonight and they play to a finish here tonight to decide the final of the 1990 Embassy World Championship and we have two programs at 9.30 to 10.30 is the first one. We're staying here now of course to waiting for Steve Davis and Jimmy White to come back. Davis on 14, White on 15, White needs one. It's very, very tricky out there indeed as you think Ray because the nerves are flying like I've never seen them. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean Jimmy actually was a very unlucky there as John was just saying. I mean Jimmy played a terrific part with the rest. Mm. Dreadfully unlucky to, to get himself snookered but then he had a good chance and uh, I mean, Jimmy's obviously finding the pressure there. You know, mm. There is a lot there, David, isn't there? Mm. OK, thank you, Ray. Here they come. Jimmy, couple of chances, certainly, in that last frame to take the match. 30th frame, and Davis, Steve Davis to break. who only once since he became champion in 81 has failed to reach the final. Here we go again. Two frames to go now, then. One. Jimmy wants one of them. He also wanted that black.
Under normal circumstances, Jimmy would cut that uh, red in near this pocket, but uh, these are not normal circumstances. Yes, and this isn't easy. Carl, Steve Davis, six. And can Steve get through to no. this red no. into the left hand pocket? It appears he can. Steve will be wanting to clear the black spot here before attempting to pot the black. Steve Davis. Six. Concentrating on screwing back for that black. Missed the pot. A lot of work to be done here, though, to build a frame winning league up. And that's not the best of shots. Got the wrong side of the blue. This time, overrun a little. But will he still attempt the cut? This could be a crucial shot. Has that red come off the top cushion and oh? No, it's perfectly all right. But it's pretty straight. Yes, and he's hampered with the other red. So, although the red's easy, the position very difficult. 61. And a little slice of luck, I think, there for Jimmy. The green being pushed over in the way of the red up the table here. Yes, I'm not quite sure why Jimmy suddenly played that. He played to pot the blue, but no attempt at any position. I think he was probably trying to frighten those butterflies, John.
That previous shot of Steve's made this much more difficult frame to win for both players with these two reds and the black on the side cushion. So any lead that any player can build up now <laughs> is very important. straight on this blue but he's got the cue ball across 12 and that's just what he didn't want now he takes this red on of course he's going into the other reds and then we build a, a small lead up I would suggest a safety shot off the red touching the pink would be his Right shot. He must have heard you. Again, he didn't get it near enough to that bolt cushion. This time it's Steve's turn to be unlucky. Sixteen points separating them. Steve Davis. One. And that was certainly a mistake from Steve hitting the blue there. Can Jimmy get through to this red? <laughs> now, what do you think? Would that pot or not? Right, camera drops down. If he knocks this one in, it could be a frame winner. But it was an awful long way off with that. This time, Steve's been very fortunate. The only two reds Jimmy can see, I think, are the two against the right-hand cushion. So I think we're going to see a, a pot into this corner pocket and a deep screw back to bulk. Looking at Jimmy's face, he seems quite happy with it, so I don't think Steve can get it, the red over the middle. And looking at Steve's face, I'm sure. He can't get onto the one over the top either, John. In fact, having a look at the table, I think he's snookered on all reds. going through that mind. Well, this is certainly, looking from here, a very difficult shot he's faced with. I think the swerve is the only chance and hope to push this red safe or maybe even pot it. But has left Jimmy this cut into the right hand corner pocket now. Oh. 
So, the fortunes once again change. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Well, yes, Jimmy certainly twitched on that. He did hit it twice as hard as he needed to. So, a chance for Steve to get back into this game. it Ted having been out there it looks easy but what that pressure does to your mind One. even that a simple shot like that and Jimmy's got himself in an awkward position not in trouble at all but should have been much easier than this I think this is the big shot of the match. Jimmy gets this and gets position. Nine. Fancy him to go on and win the frame and match of this visit. Just checking the board, Jimmy. 32 points the difference. So you'll just be trying to drop this red in. Black into the left hand corner pocket. 70. And that is rather a sad picture there. Wants that to bounce. <laughs> so red. And a colour required. And just slowing himself down, making sure. Of course, when you're in this position, Jimmy's just touching his head, which tells. He can't even reckon the score up. And I can tell him now that Steve Davis again requires one snooker. It's a very popular win. But one can't have help having feelings for the defending world champion. Yes, and Ted, what a semi-final we've seen. I think we've seen every aspect of the game. It's been shown what pressures do to players. I mean, these two players, two of the greatest in the world, and both missing straight pots that club players could knock in in normal conditions. Been a tremendous match. Steve in terrible trouble here. Requiring five snookers and facing a snooker. He's made the final of this championship for the past seven years.
I must say I've not seen Jimmy White play so well as he's played in this particular match for a very long time. Jimmy, eager to get it over with. So defending champion Steve Davis takes a sip of that water that he has become so famous for. He collects up his cue and like the great sportsman he is, he applauds his opponent as Jimmy White fights his way to the final for the 1990 championship with victory over defending champion Steve Davis at 16 frames to 14. What a performance. performance that you've been watching here with us live on this uh, well, not epic afternoon but what a great afternoon of snooker. Ray Evans can you believe that one? No, that, actually I was, I was thinking in the last frame David it, you know Barry manages boxers and in those last frame they were like two boxers they'd batted each other into submission and it was going to have to be a very easy pot for one of them to get and mm. I mean Steve missed one that he would never miss and then Jimmy did the business, but I mean, fantastic match. Yeah, I might miss one, I think he missed at least a couple, and Jimmy missed about four, he had so many chances there, but as John Spencer was saying, missing balls that a normal club player would put down, but that was all about what we've talked about all through this championship, this business of pressure. It suddenly seems to hit people who are playing well, and suddenly you get this patch when everything goes wrong, doesn't it? Yeah, well, because it's in the mind, David, you see. It, it, I mean, Steve Davis has got a tremendously strong mind, and it has always paid off for him, but it's got to him this season a bit on other occasions, and it has done today. Mm -hmm. And if you don't control your mind, and you don't really keep on the job, you let it wander a bit, and all of a sudden, the, the balls look bigger, and the pockets look smaller, and, and I mean, it, it's part of any top-class sport. Mm -hmm. How much effect do you think it had on Jimmy that he was playing Steve Davis again? I mean, he hasn't beaten him until now, and he's very conscious of uh, Davis, the player. Um, do you think that would get to him at all? Or? Well, I don't know. I think Jimmy believes that he can beat anyone in the world, obviously. But, I mean, he has played Steve an awful lot, and does yeah. do, of course, within the matchroom thing. And, uh, I mean, he, he really hasn't come out on top many times. Mm. But I think Jimmy did realise that Steve was vulnerable. I mean... Yeah. What Steve Davis has done at Sheffield this year is quite fantastic because he's had a terrible season. Mm. And to come here and defend it like the great champion he is, mm. I mean, it's been marvellous. Mm. Well, the great champion he is and the great uh, champion and the manager just one today, just actually coming into the studio. So we'll give him a couple of moments to sit down, maybe have a sip of water or something. And uh, well, I'd tell you, of course, that Jimmy White now has to play either John Parrott or Stephen Hendry. And that's been a match today, I can tell you, because it started off there with Parrott 6 9 down overnight. Had that really tremendous morning I've been talking about. If you've heard it before, I'm sorry, but people are coming in all the time. And John Parrott then had a marvellous run, five frames on the trot to go 11 9 ahead. And then uh, Hendry managed to get the last two. So they are at 11 all. And that's how they'll play to a finish here tonight to decide who plays Jimmy White. And, of course, Jimmy has uh, not just beaten Steve Davis today. What he had to do to get here was in round one, he beat Danny Fowler 10-4. Round two, beat John Virgil 13-6. And the quarterfinal beat Terry Griffiths 13-5. With every respect, not a struggle up till then. But, my goodness, you've seen the struggle here today. And Jimmy White is in the final of the Embassy Championship of the World. If he's got any breath, well done. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to give you a couple of seconds of a bit of breath because I'm going to come across to Steve. Um, what about my breath? <laughs> <laughs> I think you've exhausted all the breath, the both of you, I think. But um, that was some afternoon, wasn't it? Well, it was an uphill struggle for me. I did as, as well as I thought I could do. Um, Jimmy played so well last night and really kept me off the table so much. Uh, I didn't have any complaints last night. Um, I had to win today 7-2, mm -hmm. which is a tall order against 
anybody really, but against Jimmy in the form he's, he's been in, it, uh, it seemed like a mountain. I was very pleased with what I did. But, you had a uh, brilliant afternoon, let's face it. It was, uh, it was probably enough of a lead to, to um, make it more, more difficult than, than it could possibly be. Mm. Uh, four frames is a lot harder. Last night would have been nice if I could have gone in 12-10. But um, a monumental climb for me, and I nearly did it, but uh, sometimes you sort of run out of steam when you're coming back. Of all your matches in the Crucible, I mean, the nerves were definitely dead. If, if you said it didn't, so, but a lot of shots there this afternoon that you could have put down. That's maybe right. Blindfold. I think probably looking on, on reflection on the whole game, it's possibly the best match I've ever played in and lost, but by, by a long way. And, and rates along one of the greatest matches I've been in anyway. Well, it's the first time you've ever made the final since you've been champion for the first time, so. Yes. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I lost to Dixie that. Yeah. Didn't Say again. Well, you've First... been champion, then lost to Tony Knowles. Oh, right, Knowles, that's right. And you've always made I lost to Tony Knowles. That's right. You've forgotten that one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember that one. <laughs> Jimmy, if you have got any breath, my goodness, it was a bit twitchy out there, wasn't it? Oh, it was, um, you know, it was a tremendous match. I, I got a four frame lead last night, and I think the score affected me today, you know. Like, Steve won. Like, um, I stole a game off Steve, and he stole a game off me the first session. And. I was only two, I was uh, three in front, uh, and then he went 14-12, then 14-13, uh, Steve needed a snooker, he got a snooker, you know, I was in a, a terrible state out there, but we always have great matches, you know, like, um, yeah. you know, this man just doesn't lay down, you just have to, like, keep in there, and, like, uh, I lost, I didn't lose my concentration, I, the, the score did affect me, you know, I was, um, I kept looking at the score, thinking, well, I want to go four in front again. You know, it's no way to play snooker. You just got to play the balls. And every so often, you'd come to a point where there was a ball that, if you potted it, was possibly going to win you the About match. About four or five times. Yeah. But yeah. like, uh, you know, that snooker, like, um, certain shots look easy, but like, uh, players know, like, certain shots are pressure shots, mm -hmm. and uh, you can miss them. You've played him. What is it? Four times here in the Crucible. Yeah. At last, yeah. you've got him. Well, I've, I've not won yet. No, I'm talking about him. Oh, yeah, him, yeah. I've got yeah. him, yeah, he don't mind, yeah. <laughs> well, we can look ahead if you can. You probably don't even think about what's going to no. happen tonight. You've got John Parrott or Stephen Hendry. Yeah. It's all square that 11 old, great performance by John today. I mean, whatever happens, you're up against a great final, aren't you? For, for sure, yeah. I'm not, you know, uh, I'm blown away at the moment, Dave. Mm. I can't answer you. No, I don't blame you. Thank Absolutely you. gone, you know. Cheers. Anyway, we do appreciate coming in right after a match here towards the end of our programme. Ray Edmonds has been with me all afternoon watching it. I mean, it's no surprise the state they're in now, is it? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm out of breath and sweating watching it, David. I mean, as I, I just said today... I wasn't going to say anything. It was like... <laughs> it was like uh, Barry having you to in a boxing ring. You were slugging at each other so much that, uh, you know, I think the, you, you'd battered each other into submission. But it was, it was great, great stuff. Stupendous. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy, and well done. Thank you, Steve, for the great match and everything you've done here. And uh, you will come back, won't you? Oh, yes. Oh, thanks very so. much. Yeah. Great. So there we are. You've seen it all happen here live this afternoon. And there are the two players. And Jimmy White has made the final of the Embassy Championship of the World. And he will play either John Parrott or Stephen Hendry. And after John Parrott's great run this morning, that match is poised at 11 frames all. That is played to a finish here tonight. The first of our programmes is at 9.30.